Hello and welcome to the world famous Kia Oval. Surrey are on four wins on the bounce. They're top of the South group. It's all going pretty well, but today they come up against the defending champions, the Hampshire Hawks. Hello and welcome to the world famous uh, Kia Oval. It's all going pretty well for Surrey today. As I just said, four wins on the bounce. They're top of the South group, but today they're coming up against the defending champions, the Hampshire Hawks. This is Surrey County Cricket Club, born in a tavern in 1845. The symbol of Kennington, we've seen London grow around us. Cricket's original champions as Charles Alcock brought his vision to life and we cemented a reputation as a place of firsts. International football, FA Cup finals, international rugby, test matches, as well as where English pride came to die before a great rivalry was born from its ashes. We share our feathers with royalty and pass on the honour of the brown cap through generations. We've seen England's best spend their careers with us. Well, that's Jack Hobbs. Head and shoulders, yes, over all other living batsmen. And the game's best finish under our gasometer. We've won seven in a row, thanks to Surridge, May, Barrington, Locke, Laker, and the Bedser twins. In fact, we're well known for our famous siblings. But there's always been one family who have stood out. We saw the West Indies grip a nation on our doorstep and a pioneer set records galore in the women's game. The end of the century brought a fresh take on Ik Dien as Holyoke and his England teammates transformed us on the pitch. The changing of the oval skyline brought the greatest of finales. There it is. England have regained the ashes. and an era of final test triumphs. Alistair Cook has done it. A century in his last. Well played. On our way to our own red ball century. We're one half of the game's oldest rivalry and it's only London Derby. Can you clear the pavilion? Local players are always the lifeblood of our side but the world's best are attracted to us too. We've come through tragedies. Now we're home to world champions and cricketers of the year. 175 years have passed. There's much more to come. This is Surrey County Cricket Club, heart of London, pride of the county, the grandest stage in world cricket. Well, thank you so much for joining us today at the Oval. Uh, nine down, five to go now for Surrey. They've won seven out of nine. It's all, it's all going pretty smoothly, isn't it? And today it's the Hampshire Hawks that come to the Oval. Um, things are going so well for Surrey, actually, in all formats of the competition, Phil. I hope you like my T-shirt. Yeah. Sorry, don't miss a trick. That's a very smart move straight away. Very good. Well, you can purchase one of these T-shirts of uh, Surrey's historic run chase against Kent. You can buy one of these. £10 of every purchase goes to the Drave Syndrome charity in support of one of our own, Matt Dunn. So you can get these over on the Surrey website. But let's get straight into it. Phil mm. Walker, you're our commentator for today. You're commentating on the game. What are you expecting from this one? Uh, two pedigree cricket teams going hard at it, really. Hampshire need a win. They've lost a couple on the spin. Uh, they're obviously, as you say, defending champions, and they've got quality from top to bottom. But they do need a win here because they're ensconced in that middle section of the, the league as it stands. And this is the business end now of the group stage. They're in fourth, but they need to really try and overturn 
uh, Surrey on their own patch. And Surrey, as we know, doesn't matter what ball, what format, what colour the, 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 the kit is, they are lethal, they are unstoppable, really. They've lost two cricket matches all year. Let's just try and put that in context. That's outstanding, actually. We're, we're, we're mid-June. Yeah. The season started over two and a half months ago, and they've lost two cricket matches. Uh, and they'll be kicking themselves about those two, by the way, because that's the standards that they set here. They're seven from two, so, sorry, sorry, seven and two from nine games in this league so far. Yeah. They're sitting pretty alongside Somerset at the top. I reckon with Surrey, if they get over the line here, then they're, they've got a foot and a half in the quarterfinals. So you're being quite confident about Surrey. Let's you can't not. Talk to me about Friday. Talk to me about that game. What, what, what did you think? Well, the game that they've just played? Yeah, against Somerset. Well, again, as I say, those two were fighting it out for the top spot, right? And, and Somerset are a very, very tough nut to crack. Uh, but Surrey have done what they've done yet again. They've, they, they've, they've bullied teams, really. And, it's, and you look at the scorecards, and there's not really that much in it. It was a fairly, fairly comfortable chase in the end. Um, and this is what they do. Before the ball has been bowled, they all, they're automatically 40 for naught. They're automatically... They're, they're, the, the opponents are two or three down all, already because this is the power that this club has at the moment. I think we're going to talk about the four-day game later on um, in we the are. show yeah. because that's the story on everybody's lips and all over the T-shirts. <laughs> uh, but this is what they're doing week after week. They are a juggernaut of a cricket team. Um, and look, on a Sunday afternoon here with the wind swirling around a little bit, it'll be another good turnout again at the Kiro. Well, you always expect that here. Uh, this, is a, this is a proper cricket match, right? You know, there is, there's international quality, of course, in the Surrey setup, but there's quality as well throughout the Hampshire side as well. And James Vince, from a neutral's perspective, if you want to turn up here and have a lovely afternoon, then half an hour of James Vince will make you go home happy. Who have you been really impressed with, though, from Surrey? Because we've seen some massive performances, haven't we, from Sean Abbott, for example? <laughs> Well, again, in, in T20 cricket, Sean Abbott has literally rewritten the record books with that astonishing 33 ball, 34 ball 100 it was a few weeks back here on the Friday night. But Surrey being Surrey, they didn't play Sean Abbott two days later. They rested him. 34 balls was clearly a bit much for Sean, so they've rested him. But then this just goes to show you what they have here, the strength in depth. It's an embarrassment of riches at this place, and they... And they share the load. You saw it with their championship winning side last year. There was no outstanding bowler. Dan Worrell took 35 wickets in the championship and he was their top bowler. So this is the way they do it here. They share uh, the power around, but they don't seem to weaken the, the, the setup either. There's a, there's a ruthlessness and a remorselessness to the way they go about their cricket. Well, another player that has been particularly impressive is Laurie Evans. And I spoke to him earlier. Laurie, clubs flying in all formats at the moment. How have the last few weeks gone? Yeah, uh, very well. Obviously, um, you know, the guys in certainly the stuff I'm involved in is going all right and the stuff I'm not involved in is going all right. So, um, I, like I've said in previous interviews, uh, this has been building for some time. The squad's sort of coming together. We've got some nice experience, some nice youth, so, uh, and still a lot of good players who are, probably aren't featuring as much as they want to at the minute. You scored your first 100 uh, in T20 cricket for Surrey the other day. How was that? Talk us through that. Yeah, obviously amazing. Um, I've got close before in the blast and obviously I've scored a couple uh, out of England. Um, so it was nice to, to notch that one up, obviously for Surrey as well. So, um, yeah, nice company to be in, I think, with J-Roy, Finchie and, uh, and Sean Abbott. There you go. You've got quite the partnership as well with Sam Curran, haven't you? Talk us through that kind of friendship that you've got going on. Oh, I just... You know, I suppose when you're out there with someone like Sam, he's, he's always going to play in an aggressive manner. And generally, if we're in and, and I'm going well and he's going well, then, you know, I think, um, you know, we're probably quite difficult to bowl at. Um, so uh, we just feed off each other. And it helps that he's obviously left-handed because it means he can hit the balls in different areas than I can. So, um, yeah, it's been good. And does having a relationship with him help with that partnership? Uh, I wouldn't say we have a, a relationship, but, no, it, we're obviously known each other for a long time, played a lot of cricket with each other now and against each other. Um, and he's just obviously, ever since he arrived um, at Surrey, he's, you know, been, uh, you know, been a star with uh, bat and ball. So it's just obviously lovely to see him, you know, at the top of the game. And you're playing the defending champions today, the Hampshire Hawks. How are you approaching this one? Yeah, obviously they're a great team. Um, you know, we beat them twice last year in the group stages. And um, obviously we 
didn't get over the line in the quarterfinal and then, then go on to win it. So they're a strong side. Um, you know, today's a big game in terms of, you know, making sure we can try and qualify uh, in the top two and get a home quarter. So, yeah, it's important we just keep on going, really. Well, you're in that top spot at the moment. It's going well. Yeah, no, it's going really well. And obviously the win down at Somerset is a pretty rare thing. I think in my career, I've some of my most memorable wins have been down at Taunton because it's such a hard place to go and win. So, um, you know, that was pretty, pretty awesome. And uh, like I say, another tough game and another one on Tuesday and Thursday. Well, good luck. Cheers. Thank you. Laurie Evans there, full of confidence, of course. Now, Surrey Cricket have launched a brand new behind the series show that gives you all the exclusive access to all the players and what they get up to. It's called Hits Different, and here is episode two. So, our Friday night Vitality Blast offering is Surrey versus Kent, two really good sides with superstar players and both confident after an early win in the tournament pretty big win to kick off the season especially being a London derby at Lords so couldn't have asked much better than that but certainly a few things here and there to improve on and taking it tonight so definitely hope that that party atmosphere that I've heard so much about is lively tonight I can't wait to get out there in the Surrey Colours Obviously first game back in our hopes so let's enjoy it and um, put up a performance for the bigger crowd than Lords last night so let's have one of the I'm here actually with Kia we've got the best seats in the house like right next to the game and when the sun's shining Great crowd. There's nowhere better to be. Friday nights at the Oval have become the stuff of legend in the Vitality Blast. And encounters against Ken tend to be a relatively spicy ones. What an amazing shot from Will Jacks. A little bit of movement. Wow. Tries again and dismissed. Length a little different. And the dangerous Will Jacks comes and goes for 17. Well, direct it, it's always going to be close. Electric from Jordan Cox. The wicket's continuing to tumble now. That's the end of current. Sean Abbott, I would have been expecting to come in at this stage of the game. Well, that sounded very good off the bat by Sean Abbott. Whoever's caught it has won a £1,000. What a, a bad evening out. And that has been slogged for another six to Abbott. Oh, boy, here he goes again. It's a drop kick this time. Well, oh, that one's out of here as well. It's gone. All the way, 30 from the over. This is some striking from the big Australian. Oh, it's down the ground. Has he got the legs? He has. He's done it. Oh, wow. That's absolutely awesome. Sean Abbott. Oh, yes. It's that was pure box office. What a moment for Sean Abbott. What an innings. 34 ball 100. Previous best, 41. You mentioned that. The name of Andrew Simons, the standalone fastest blast hundred in history. And that man in your picture now shares that honour with him. The Kent Spitfires will need 224 runs to beat Surrey. It's going to be the highest successful run chase if they manage it on this ground in the blast, so that just gives a bit of context. I want to show these two. He will go to a half century. Congratulations, young man, just 22 years of age, and that is an eye catching innings. Big shot leg side this time. Not found the boundary, finds the fielder. Slapped away for four. It is all set up nicely. That required radius just hovering around 12. Picked up and taken. That man can do nothing wrong. But Muyeye has played really, really well. That's the end of an outstanding innings. It's 
simple catch. Ricketts beginning to tumble now. Pressure has built. Out. Gone. Great spiralling out of control. Surrey winners by 41 runs. A quite astonishing evening. Courtesy of that man in your picture, Sean Abbott. You know, I've heard a lot about uh, Friday nights this time of year at the Oval. So, um, you know, it was the furthest thing from my radar tonight, looking up at the scoreboard and seeing that next to my name. You know, I've been working my backside off with my batting and to trying to contribute with all three facets. So, pretty grateful that Bats and Sammy gave me the opportunity to bat up the order tonight. I'm sharing a record with my hero. So, yeah, it's not going to sink in for a while. Well, we saw Kent from earlier in the T20 Blast campaign, which takes us perfectly on to this next section. Obviously, we're all about the T20 Blast today, but we've got to talk about what happened earlier in the week in the county championship. Surrey making history, completing the second largest run chase in championship history by chasing 501 to beat Kent, setting a club record. And as the T-shirt states, some brilliant batting from Dom, Jamie and Ben. Um, Phil, what was your view on Surrey's performance? Uh, they strolled it. Ridiculous as that sounds, they strolled it. Once, once Kent had a bit of fun on that third morning to try and set up a declaration, in the end they got bowled out. But once, once they, you offer Surrey 100 runs a session across five sessions on a flat one, it doesn't matter what's gone on for the two and a half days before that when Surrey probably played their worst cricket of the year and gave up a first innings deficit of over 150. But once you dangle that carrot into, in, in front of that team with that lineup, then you always knew it was going to be interesting. Yeah. Uh, they strolled it five down, and it could have been four. Dom Sibley has played the, made one of the slowest hundreds in championship history. It's a beautiful rebuttal to this new basball culture and... and well, this, this is what I thought was the most impressive, was that they all got to their hundreds in very, very different ways. Yeah, for sure. And you can't have one without the other, right? If three play players had played like Dom Sibley, we'd still be batting now. If three players had played like Jamie Smith, who had a 70 ball 100, then it, it, it would have all gone off. It would have been chaos. The light and shade in that innings was perfect. There was Sibley, who was the anchor, and there were the stroke makers around him. And Ben Folks, who's having a great year. I mean, there's a huge question, about Mark, about why he's not playing up at Edgbaston this week in the first test, but that's another story. He then strolled it home in the afternoon with another chance at 100. He's having a wonderful season. So are Surrey. They're, this is a team that's forgotten how to lose. That's the thing. They have forgotten how to lose cricket matches. So this is what I was going to come on to. How big for Surrey's confidence do you think that win is? Well, the confidence is already through the roof, right? Well, so Phil, what I'm getting at is I want to know, do you think Surrey are going to win the T20 Blast? That's, <laughs> that's the question that I'm asking you right now. Well, they're definitely going to win the, the Red Bull stuff. The, the counter championship will be a procession. The, the T20 stuff is, is more up for grabs. Uh, they're the form team in the, league, in the country across the both formats. Uh, they're a very good bet for it. But then there's other good, good teams around it as well. As for the championship... Go down the bookies now and cash out because, because Surrey, Surrey are strolling. That will be a procession. Well, let's relive all the action then from the county championship match. Full toss is uh, just thumped back at Denley by Sibley. Um, he's not so in his shell. He won't take advantage of one like that. Oh, and folks have a little fence at this one that climbed on him. It's outside edge, but just the two slips, and that's going to whistle away. Deverson bowls, full again, clip past the man at mid-wicket, and that's four runs. That's a beautiful shot by Ben Folks. Over the wicket he comes to Folks, who's up on his toes to a straight delivery, just whips this into the leg side. There's his 50. It's been a very good innings, this, from Ben Folks. Oh, it's chipped in the air by Folks, but it's just away from the right hand. And Mayaya in there at short mid-wicket. That's what they've been looking for. And uh, clips into the onside very pleasantly by Ben Folks, and that'll race away through mid-wicket. No chance for Matt Quinn, who, as I said, is uh, patrolling the whole of the leg side boundary. To uh, Folks works that away. It's a lovely shot from uh, Ben Folks. Well, let go for four, it will. Very fine indeed. As uh, Sibley comes a long Played. way down the pitch and has actually just 
uh, flick that behind square for four runs. The folks who drives nicely away through extra cover. Quinn's on the chase here, but he's not going to get to that. As Everson is in over the wicket and driven by folks for four. It's not beyond the realms of possibility that Ben Folks could get to his 100 here before Dominic Sibley. That's the 150 run partnership. Everson coming in over the wicket to Folks on 95. Oh, he's drifted onto his hip. Oh. There's every chance now because that will take Folks that boundary onto 99. Matt Quinn round the wicket to Sibley, who's tucking this through mid wicket to bring up his 100. What an innings from Dominic Sibley! Absolute vigil this. 368 balls. As in round the wicket comes Kadri, and there is Folks, and there is the 100 for Ben Folks. He's used his feet, he's clipped it into the leg side. Wes Agar tumbles to his right to do the fielding. It enables Folks to get back for two. And Ben Folks, fantastic innings this. Uh, goes for the hook there, does uh, Sibley. And that'll go away for four despite uh, the preponderance of leg side fielders. Well, oh, that's short from leaning. Ooh. That's pulled by Folks violently over the top of mid wicket for six. It was very short from Jack leaning. And another short one, folks have swung this one up and over mid-wicket for six more. As this is short, all now, folks could go here. This could be the end of the innings, it is, because he's looked for another six. It's hit the toe end of his back, he can't quite believe he's just done that. Uh, dry to the offside, that's a crisp shot from uh, Will Jax. It's short, so Jax jumps outside his leg stump and helps it over backward point for four. Wes Agar still pounding in. That's a wide one from him, though. Flayed away by Will Jacks forward of square. As in round the wicket comes Arshdeep Singh. And that's a long half volley that's put away by Will Jacks. As in round the wicket goes Arshdeep Singh. Short. And this is pulled oh. by Jacks. And he's going to get caught, is he? Yes, by Wes Agar. Just inside the boundary rope. Arshdeep Singh is round the wicket to Clark. Oh, it's an outside edge which flies away down to the third man boundary rope for four. As Agar bowls to Clark, cut away. That's a lovely shot. A lot of effort for nothing for the bowler. On strike, and he's punching beautifully off the back foot for four. Gorgeous shot from Dom Sibley. Bowling to Clark, and Clark turns it into the leg side for the single. They've only gone and done it, and they've only gone and done it with 23.5 overs remaining because Surrey reached their victory target of 501 with Dominic Sibley 140 not out of 415 deliveries. Well, if you want to celebrate a little bit of club history for Surrey, then you can get one of these T-shirts. I've said it before, I'll say it again. It is available on the website and £10 goes to charity. Uh, so now, back to today, back to the T20 Blast, of course. Surrey taking on the Hampshire Hawks. Let's head down to the middle where Ashley Wilmot is with the coin toss and the two captains. OK, it's great to see so many of you here today. It is time for the coin toss, and I am joined in the middle by Surrey captain Chris Jones. We're here with Hampshire captain James Vince. We've got our umpires, Neil Bainton and Rob White, and the all-important mascot, George, is joining us today as well. So let's toss the coin. It's heads, which means Hampshire have won the toss. What are you going for, James? Uh, we're going to have a bowl. Why is that? Uh, looks a good pitch, uh, generally a high-scoring ground, chances some weather around, but, um, yeah, regardless of the toss, we've got to go out there and perform well. Exactly. You're the reigning champions. You've had a target on your back all season. How do you assess your performances? Um, we've dropped a few points, uh, particularly in our last couple of games, but uh, that can happen in this format. So, yeah, good chance for us to bounce back today and hopefully get back to winning ways. You did mention Liam Dawson was on fine form on Friday. Who else should we, we be keeping an eye out for? Um, well, I guess right the way through the lineup, we've got people that can uh, change your game. So, 
uh, yeah, Nathan Ellis with the ball, Ben McDermott up top with the bat. Um, as I say, we've got plenty of match winners in our side and hopefully it's our day today. Great to speak to you. Best of luck today, James. Well done. I'm just going to head over here. Hi, Chris. Chris, they've opted to bowl. Would you have gone for that decision? Uh, yeah, probably would have done the same today. Um, as you said, it's a good wicket and there's a little bit of weather around potentially, but um, we've won quite a few games uh, defending totals as well, so not too displeased. It's been six T20 games since you've been back home. Does it feel good to be back? Yeah, it feels great to be back. Um, just seeing a lot of familiar faces. Uh, yeah, we had a, a long away trip, uh, but a good one, and hopefully we can continue that good form at home. Laurie Evans earlier said that your win against Somerset on Friday was one of your most memorable wins. Do you, do you uh, agree with that? Yeah, 100%. I mean, uh, every time you do put on your shirt for Surrey, um, it, that tends to be a memorable win. But yeah, it was a real special one last time out. Um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully more the same today. You're in really good form. You're at the top of the table. I'm sure that feels very good. But what do you put that down to this season? I uh, definitely put it, put it down to um, a, a collective team effort, really, uh, both on and off the field. Everyone's buying into uh, a lot of the things that we're trying to do um, as a team, as a squad. And, yeah, hope, as I said before, more of the same today. Thanks, Chris. Best of luck today. So there we have it. That's the coin toss. Hampshire won the toss and have elected to bowl. Things get underway very shortly. Thank you so much to Ashley there. And, yeah, great to hear Chris Jordan talking about Friday night. Of course, Surrey, a lot of confidence. They're the new leaders of the South Group, leapfrogging Somerset after that 28-run win in Taunton. Let's relive the highlights. Around the field, coming to the leg side, and uh, that one's going to run away. First boundary of the day, just turned around the corner. So second over of this spell for Overton. Oh, that's a nice-looking drive. Just stepped into it there, did Will Jacks. It's gone all the way for four. Lovely shot. <laughs> in the air that's going all the way six runs great shot we've talked about already with Craig Overton in comes Henry again this one up and over has he got enough for six not quite just in front of the rope and he's sitting next to me this one in the air and that's going to run away no fielder out there goes through the point boundary for four and Henry's got his yeah they've laid a great platform and it's given them the freedom to play shots like that so Green is going to have to keep changing it up. That was off the QN, straight out to Tom Abel. That could be the first wicket. The green machine is struck. They're in a good position here, sorry. And this one is going aerial. Now, this should be out and is taken. Sam Curran has to go after finding a perfect gap. The ball before. Van <laughs> der is in, it's up. And this might be out. Matt Henry steadies himself. Matt Henry takes the catch. Very good quality cricketer. Now this is in the air. Is it going to reach the fielder? He stops underneath it and takes it. Another wicket for Somerset. Davies taking the pace off bowling into the pitch in various different ways. And he's got half a bat on that one. And Matt Henry comes round and catches it in front of the Botham stand. There will be no batters that you need to get through before it's safe. In the air and take on oh, a catch. What a, what a catch. catch Tom Abel? Abel. What a great catch that is. That's a match changing catch that overs to go in comes oh this one's in the air Davy off Davy and the field has come round three of them towards it and there will be a catch oh brilliant stuff Somerset on top for sure this one's big that's gone for six first ball he's not taking a look huge put down in the crowd but what a shot that is from Sunil Narone I might just sneak under that but that's gone with that's shots six. like that certainly won't be the case does he come back after that Oh, now this one is in the air. Has it got the legs? I think it does. All the way. That's back-to-back -back sixes. At the ground for six. Jordan again. again. Big That's going to go all the way for six. And this is a massive over now for Surrey. And again. Oh, yeah. And That's again. Gone miles over backward point. What a shot that is from Chris Jordan. Four balls to go. Oh, it's another one straight down the pipe. Straight out to that slip corner out there in cow corner. <laughs> Dixon takes another. Ben Green's bowls a heavy ball. Just what Banton wants when he goes for the Banton scoop. Being chewed into. But that one's come off the outside edge all the way out to deep point. And Sam Curran gets his man. Will Smead's night is over. There he goes. There he goes. Sam Curran digs that one in. He means that one. To play spin bowling. What did he teach you? Huge, huge sweat six. 
There's that oh. sweep I was talking about a little bit earlier on from Tom Abel. He's gone in. There's Abel has he edged that one behind? He has. In St James Street for that ball now. Yeah. Oh, Banton to the reverse sweep, out to the sweep. That brings him his 50 and well played 50 off 33 balls. Slow ball. In the air, out. That's the end of Tom Banton. And he comes. Gregory just happy to play this one. Oh, they're running hard here. They'll look for two. No, he says no. Oh, actually, yeah, now he's saying yes. They're going to run on a misfield. And I think that might be out and it's game. Oh, no, he didn't have the ball in his hand. For Jack Chantry. Oh, another wicket happening here. Oh, Sam Curran is doing what Sam Curran tends to do. He's just getting wicket after wicket. Ah, but still got three. Oh, yeah, that is the perfect Yorker, Chris Jordan. What a night he's having, showing all of his class, all of his skill, smashing into the base of a lot. Gus Atkinson. That, though, is an easy catch. It's almost put down by... Suddenly on the right, it was smashed to him at cover. It was the Yorker again. Looking for that straight boundary as he belts that down the ground straight to his brother Overton. Caught Overton, bold Curran, and he picks up his fifth wicket. Congratulations to Sam Curran. He looked every bit the superstar cricketer tonight. And Chris Jordan did, has done a magnificent job, not just with his batting and bowling, but he's led his captaincy at mid off, talking to all his bowlers. So a big win for Surrey on Friday, leapfrogging the leaders to go to the top of the table. It also means that they've got four wins on the bounce in the T20 Blast. So today, here's hoping Surrey can do it and make it five out of five uh, wins in a row against the defending champions, the Hampshire Hawks. Now, as I said earlier, uh, Surrey County Cricket Club have got a brand new series online, giving you exclusive access to all the behind the scenes and seeing what the players get up to. It's called Hits Different, and here is episode three. For our T20 Blast season, we love bringing families to the ground. We partner with Xbox to run our family zone, which is a great activity for the kids. They come in, they watch a little bit of cricket, they can play some Xboxes, get involved with all the activities there, some photos and uh, face painting, all those sorts of things. It just gives the chance for our families to come in and enjoy different elements of the venue. It definitely inspires you. You see the emotion that they show off and it um, kind of gives a great vibe around the group. This is our last home game um, for a while now before we go on a little road trip, so it'd be good to uh, win again here and start that uh, trip nicely three from three. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Quite significantly, we get a lot of young people in here now. And that's, and that's part of us delivering yeah, what is a, a family-friendly atmosphere. As a club, we've been fantastic. We see some you know, smiling young kids and, and older kids as well. It's the best place to be watching cricket, that's for sure. Hello. Surrey fat first after Ravi Bapara, the Sussex captain, won the toss. It is an absolutely beautiful afternoon out here. There's a nice hum around the ground, people still flooding in, and we have an intriguing cricket match upon us. And that's four straight away. What a shot. That has laced that boundaries early on. That's huge. Gives himself a little bit of room, and that is a big, big hit. Bowled in. That had plenty of gas behind it. Sussex needed that. Nope, he's going to go high, and he's going to go very long, and this could be caught in the crowd. Has it gone too oh. far even for that? Dropped. Yeah, Curran's gone high on this. Might get away with it. Oh, what a great catch. A really good catch. Your lot. Thank you very much. Surrey, 148 all out. We're really lucky to be sort of partnered with Kia, who do deliver a lot of the different activations in bowl. There's a Kia high catch and the lap of honour at half time. All right, we're going to get this underway in three, two, one.
That's a really good controlled shot from Clark. And that's going to make it all the way. Short wide, got him, what a catch. Superb Laurie Evans, a backward point. Here we go, Ravi Mapara is a monster, folks. 10 to win, 13 and a half to go. They've gone up, and he's given him. Papara has to go for just two. Oh, it's just gone. Fielder underneath it, and it sails over his head. It was Laurie Evans down here at Long On. The balance of power is shifting massively towards Sussex now. What a game we've seen. It's been fantastic, hasn't it? Low-scoring thriller, mid-scoring thriller. Let's see again, Sam Curran. Makes room. That's got to be given. Oh, he's on his hands and knees. Sam Curran, he cannot believe that has not been... See the umpire signal. The upshot is it's a single to Tomlesop. It is Tom Laws. Oh, what a great opportunity for him here. Here it comes. He's hit that hard, flat, one bounce four. Superb Tom Alsop. Scores are level. And now, barring not exactly a miracle, but needing one off two balls, Sussex are going to scrape home. Tom Laws is in. He's hit it into the onside, and there it is. That is a famous win. And they've beaten the best side in the land here. As a club, we've been fantastic from the start of the season. And, you know, when you play for a club like this, you're expected to, to win every game. And sometimes that doesn't happen, you know. Um, but there's some great things happening in that dressing room. And um, it's nice to see we've obviously got some wealth of uh, individual talent, but we're starting to gel nicely as a group as well. Well, I've got a Surrey legend with me now, former captain Adam Holyoke. How are you? Oh, great, thank you. How are you? Yeah, great, thank you. It must be um, pretty cool being back at your, your old home ground. Uh, it's amazing. It's always great to come back here. Um, I thought back in the day it was the best ground in the world, but I think it's got even better since then. So amazing, amazing place and just I'm grateful to be back. What are you expecting today then in terms of the atmosphere first? Well, the atmosphere is always good. Um, whether there's, that's the one thing about the, the Oval is whether there's 500 people or 30,000, it's, uh, it's amazing. So I know today we're probably going to be close to a full house, I would have thought. So uh, it's, um, it'll be great. You, of course, Captain Surrey for the first ever T20 Blast in 2003. You won that, didn't you? All right. did, yes, yes. Bit of all right. Uh, how far has uh, T20 cricket come? Did you ever expect it to get this big? Well, I did say back in the day when, uh, before we played it, I said, um, yeah, T20 cricket is good, but I don't think it'll ever catch on. So Did you? <laughs> I was obviously way <laughs> off the mark life. there. And um, it's, uh, you know, it's a worldwide phenomenon now, India, and, and it's got bigger and bigger uh, ever since then. I think we started it. Yeah, well, I think you did. <laughs> How would 2003 Adam Holyoke play in the T20 Blast now? How would you approach it? Um, well, I think you've got to move with the times. At the time, we just did what we could. Uh, the game's evolved a lot since then, so, um, you know, it'll, and it'll evolve again in the next 20 years, so you try and move with the times. I'm not moving very fast anywhere anymore, so I'm <laughs> glad, thankfully, I've got a place sitting up here watching, not playing out on the ground. OK, so you're sitting up here watching today. What are you expecting from the two teams? Hampshire Hawks, obviously, the defending champions, but Surrey are on a brilliant run of form at the moment. Yeah, Surrey's just red hot at the moment. Um, I know that's mainly championship form, but, uh, you know, T20, I feel like the vibe around the place is great. Uh, it's our home ground. Um, you know, we own London here, so I, I, I think that um, it'll be a Surrey victory. And uh, you, you've obviously come over from Australia for the summer. Have you got any plans? What, what are you doing? Well, there's a, there's a little tournament going on over here at the moment, a little competition called the Ashes. So um, I'm coming over here and I've, I've got a we, of... we don't talk about the Ashes when we're talking about the T20 Blast. We're all about the T20 Blast here yeah. today, Adam. Well, yes. Um, so I'm doing a little bit of work around that. But obviously trying to get involved here at Surrey and, um, and, and doing some work with them as well. So it's always just great to come back here. And are you excited for today? 
It's always excited. Always excited. Anytime I get to see Surrey play, it's exciting, but especially in T20. Do you have a prediction? Yeah, Surrey by... Who's bowling first? Do we know who won the toss? Hampshire won the toss and decided to bowl first, yeah. To bowl first. Do you think that's a good decision? Um, well, it, I think T20, on a pitch like the Oval, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, so... Yeah, I think we'll win by 23 runs. Sorry, we'll win by 23 runs. How about that for us? Nice and exact. Well, yeah. I'll buy you a drink after that if you're right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Adam, I thank you so it. much. Thank Enjoy you. today. Thank you. So that's Adam Hollyoke. And uh, I think now we're going to hand over to our commentators um, who are going to take you away. So hello to Phil Walker and Cameron Ponsobi. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our live coverage from the Kia Oval. Uh, Hampshire are the visitors this afternoon, uh, and it promises much to real pedigree cricket teams. Hampshire, of course, the defending champions in the Vitality Blast, and Surrey, with just those two defeats across both formats so far this year, broadly unstoppable in whichever format they come up against. This is a mouth-watering affair. Let's just one run through the teams briefly uh, before coming to my co-commentator, Cameron Ponsonby. So, Hampshire have chosen to field. Won the toss, chose to field. And so, visitors first. In fact, we'll go with the home side first. Sorry, so Will Jacks and Laurie Evans will be kicking things off. We know what to expect from them. Sam Curran in at three. Jamie Smith in at four on the back of that astonishing 100 in the championship game last week. Tom Curran at five. Jamie Overton at six. You'll expect those two to, to show some pyrotechnics as well in the middle order. Sean Abbott at seven. We know what he's capable of. Chris Jordan will be skippering the side, coming off the back of runs as well. Sonny Ryan, Gus Atkinson and Tom Laws, the bowlers. Hampshire, Ben McDermott, the Aussie opener, uh, will be kicking things off with James Vince. Toby Albert, Joe Weatherly at four. Liam Dawson at five on the back of some good runs over the weekend. James Fuller at seven. Benny Howell, Ross Whiteley, Chris Wood, Nathan Ellis and John Turner. Cameron, what can we expect today? I think we're going to see an incredibly high standard of cricket on show. Surrey have been relentlessly competent across formats this season. They've kind of got a, an embarrassment of riches, uh, both literally and figuratively, <laughs> having added Dan Lawrence to their ranks from next season, earlier in the week. And also we've got one team flying high at the top of the table and another in Hampshire who, well, they've lost a couple and now they're kind of position that top four that route their route to the quarterfinals is at risk so all in all then we're in for a treat yeah as you say Hampshire have lost their last two so they need a win Surrey you could you feel they have a little bit more to play with a larger margin of Ferreira seeing as they're seven and two from nine so far joint top with Somerset who they beat quite comfortably in the preceding game so there's a lot riding on this one especially from the visitors perspective and it will be the stalwart Chris Wood to get us going from the Mickey Stewart Members Pavilion and no slips a man at the 45 on the offside and a standard offside ring two men out on the leg side a deep square is to be expected especially against these two right-handed openers who are so muscular and strong through the, the onside in particular and a man at fine leg. So a pretty conventional field so far. Chris Wood has seen it and done it over a number of years for Hampshire. He's a true servant of the club. And a very fine white ball operator. Maybe not quite as much pace as he once had, but he has all the tricks and all the nows and know-how. And it will be Will Jacks to face first with Laurie Evans waiting at the non-striker's end. Both of them in good form, of course. Laurie Evans in particular played beautifully so far. We heard from him earlier in the piece. Nice start. Tidy start by Chris Wood. I remember interviewing Chris Wood a couple of years ago. And um, at the time, he almost came across as the Ledley King of Cricket. He'd been so injured and he wasn't training, batting or bowling outside of matches. He was just rocking up on match day, doing very well. Which I think, I think that is the best type of job in the world, actually. 
professional yeah. cricketer in match days only. Yeah, you'd struggle to get a better gig than that. As I say, he served this club so well over the years. He's in again. Bang on the money. Played quietly into the offside. As much as this side bat all the way down, they won't want to get off to an iffy start as they did against Sussex a couple of weeks back. One of only two defeats, of course, for Surrey so far in T20 this year. And they'll just be looking to size this pitch up. There's a tiny bit of green on it, as we've become accustomed to this year. Down he comes, and Surrey will be off the mark with probably a leg by into the onside. Yeah. I think that's been an example of Surrey's strengths and that they're top of the table. They've won matches in a kind of a variety of way. They've, they've blown teams away, so they, they, they put on. Well, I've got the card up here, 258 against Sussex earlier this year. And they've also had matches there. They lost at Gloucestershire in a very kind of low-scoring affair. And they also got bailed, bailed out by Chris Jordan on Friday, mm. having got off to a bit of a stodgy start in the top-of-the-table match against Somerset. Tit hard, but straight to mid on. With those scammers through for a single, nicely done by Laurie Evans. He's away. Played very nicely so far, Laurie Evans, in this season. Of course, he's just a white ball player now for Surrey. They have such versatility of options across the board. You can sub out one class cricketer and bring in another, and this has been the story of Surrey's year so far. Laurie Evans returning to the club. He's having an Indian summer. And he's gone! Clipped it straight to the man, short at mid-wicket. And there is a stunned silence in the crowd as Will Jacks, on the back of that immense 60, of course, not too long ago, has got to go for a blob, a four-ball duck for Will Jacks. And it was a rather innocuous delivery and a rather half-hearted dab, in truth. Didn't get hold of it at all. Taken at the bootlaces by the man at shortish mid-wicket, Benny Howell there, and... Well, no one really saw that coming, Cameron. Cricket's a simple game, isn't it? If you're Hampshire, just, just bowl a nice straight delivery, hit it straight to the fielder at mid-wicket, what's the problem? We'll see that with the field that Hampshire have set, they have their two men out on the leg side. So Chris Wood has been trying to swing that ball back into the right-hander, and the kind of risk-reward there is if you get beaten either side of that kind of mid-wicket fielder, or to the left at least, we'll go for four, but you clip it about knee high in the air you'll have to find yourself out as well so the perfect start for Hampshire you'll see Sam Curran arriving at the Greece yeah so first blood to Hampshire but Surrey will not be unbowed by that Sam Curran has been in scintillating form across the board of course the world's most expensive Indian Premier League signing He's really in the prime of his career across across the formats and across the world. He's in at three here, as has become his want in this campaign so far. It's, of course, he's been stepping in as well for Chris Jordan as skipper. He's an all-action cricketer in the absolute prime of his career. But, yeah, you're right there, Cam. It was a smart piece of play for the left-arm seamer, swinging it into the right-handers' pads. Current straight away off the mark it always, it always staggers me just how much cricket Sam Curran's played he's 25 and played I think it's about 350 career matches already so he's played 80 first class games 70 let's say 180 T20s you can compare that to um, one of his, his fellow players at Surrey Gus Atkinson who's the same age group mm. I think Gus Atkinson's got about 40 career professional games due to a number of injuries I know he Sam Curran is both a very young player still and an incredibly experienced one. Yeah, certain cricketers just seem born for the fray. And from the time he came into the setup as a, as a 17, 18 year old, barreling in from the JM Finn stand end, not much of him, but already had that kind of nous and, and personality that you need at the top level. And you saw straight away that he was going to be something special. Maybe not quite as special as the most high-paid cricketer in, in the world, as, as we saw when he was signed by the Kings XI Punjab, of course, a few months ago. But that's a mark of how far he's come. And he's facing up, first delivery of the second over. And just 
tipping it into the onside to bring Laurie Evans onto strike. Without wanting to kind of jump to premature conclusions, I think we've seen both, just from the seven balls we've seen so far, we've seen the batters kind of struggling to really time the ball. It seems like the ball's nipping off the wicket just a little bit, which I must admit, a T20 game is what I never want to see. I want to see the ball flying to the stands relentlessly and all the time. Of course. But we might not get that. We shall find out. It's John Turner again from the JM Finn. Playing a miss, fresh air shot. It was probably there to climb into. Didn't really move into the shot there, Laurie Evans, though. He's just, just eyeing up that inviting offside boundary. No boundary riders as yet on the offside. Only third, deep third. And deep square leg on the leg side. So it's, it's a wide open expanse there through the offside. But just a fresh air shot to get himself going. Nicely played with straight to Nathan Ellis there behind square on the offside. So this is John Turner, who's just trying to make his way in this Hampshire first 11. I have to say, it's the first time that I've seen him in the flesh. Muscular medium pacer. South African born, and he's just been blooded into this side this year. They rate him very highly, though, to Hampshire. And they're just going through a kind of transitional period, you feel, a little bit with their T20 side. Straight up in the air. This will be easy pickings for James Vince at deep mid-off. And suddenly, Surrey are four for two. He will be cranky with himself. Laurie Evans is in no position there to play the hook. And it's come off the splice and looped invitingly to the skipper, James Vince, at deep mid-off. And both now Surrey's explosive openers are gone. Barely having trouble to score us. It's well bowled by John Turner, banging it in halfway down, challenging the batter. He's in no position at all to play that. And it's an easy catch in front of his face by James Vince. So just another example of that zip off the wicket that's happening there is that Evans has been rushed there. He's not got through the shot at all by the time it's arrived on him. And we had it was it was a very simple catch for James Vince with that classic case of the non-striking batter trotting through for a, a potential run if the catch went down and Will Jackson turned his back and, and knew what was knew what was what. I also saw James Fuller there from Hampshire giving a huge celebration there. The hat was off, arms flying everywhere. They know they've got off to well, I don't think you can think of much of a better start than both openers back in the hutch with only four runs on the board. Well I can think of three others, but <laughs> They'll yeah. take this. Yeah, it's an excellent start by the visitors. And as we said at the top of the show, they do need this. This is a big, big game for Hans. Wow. May have essayed a single there into the offside, but chosen to sit on, sit on his back just for the moment. Jamie Smith coming off the back of that extraordinary 170 balls in uh, Surrey's record-breaking chase of 500 against Kent earlier in the week. Still can't quite get that out of my mind. 500 for five, and they strolled home. John Turner in again. And he's got out the over very nicely. Excellent start. He's just finding his way in this side, is John Turner, but he'll be very pleased to get through that first over. Wicked in a couple of singles. Surrey five for two after two. It's all happening, Cameron. It is indeed. It looks very difficult out there we haven't seen I think we've seen one ball really middled to a fielder and aside from that the the runs that have come have not been firmly fed, um, struck out to sweepers they've been inside and outside edges that have kind of crept away into kind of gaps you wouldn't expect anyone to be but I think Jamie Smith is he's not been batting at four the whole time this competition he's been floating up and down the order as the situation provides he's away against Chris Wood, just down to fine leg for a single. But again, definite movement from the left armour into the pads of the right hander, as you said, Cameron, that led to that first wicket in the first over. And we're seeing a little bit of lateral shape as well again into his second over here for Chris Wood. It's an excellent start by the visitors. Surrey just have to be a little bit careful here. 
Not quite there to hit again, as you say, just a little bit stodgy perhaps this pitch initially. Sam Curran threw his shot. Top hand coming through and just clothing it into the onside. Again, it may be a kind of two isolated incidents, but if you compare the two dismissals, one is a, a clipped mid wicket where uh, Jax would have felt early on the ball. He's gone through the shot sooner than he wished to. And Evans is the other, other side. He was late on it. Sorry, uh, he was late on the ball. He's going to get away with that. It won't run away for four. He'll pick up a couple. He's trying to play much straighter there, I think, Sam Curran. It's just rather skewed off the outside edge, but with no boundary rider out there square on the offside, it fell safe. But again, just another mini example of a pitch that's perhaps a little bit stodgy, a little bit spongy. Not quite coming on as the left-hander would hope. Intriguing start. He also points out we're very central at the Oval today. There's no one short side where teams could try and bully their way over to kind of advancing the run rate by striking a few into the crowd. So it might be a case of today when the spinners come on in those middle overs, when there are five fielders out, obviously teams really trying to force the matter through twos rather than letting the long handle out. It's very good again by Chris Wood. Just one delivery left of the third over. I think it's one for five so far. So if you can just get out of this second over without a boundary conceded, that would be an excellent start for the old stager. Surrey, of course, given the chance of twisting or sticking, they twist and they twist again. But you have to be careful here that you don't go too hard too soon. Brilliant stuff. Eight for two from three. Hampshire doing this very well so far. No, sorry, I haven't had a, a sniff of a boundary in the three overs that we've had so far. I think with those two early wickets, that's why Smith has come up the order rather than it being Tom Curran or Jamie Overton to try and power the innings forward. But also, with the way the wicket is playing, it does call for a more kind of traditional uh, kind of batter's technique. Yeah, I think, I think you're absolutely right. But, they use Jamie Overton as a, in a floating role, same with Abbott as well. Everyone's padded up, ready to go, but they, they pick their moments. And you're right, it requires a little bit of sobriety at the moment from Jamie Smith just to play the situation. That said, he's coming off the back of strumming a 70 ball 100, so he's in good nick as well. Here's Turner again. And there'll be runs down the ground. I think this will just be cut off by Vince, but they may well come back for a third. No, they're just settled for two. Not quite got enough of it, but the intent was there by Jamie Smith. It seems like the outfit was quite you know, thick. It seems quite slow at the moment. I don't know if there's, a, there's an element of moisture in the air. It's kind of clawing the ball back and stopping it from racing away. Even that shot that Sam Curran put over the ring earlier. Traditionally, the cliche here is it goes once it starts running down the square, it never stops. But it's holding up at the moment. Fresh air shot again. Not the first time we've seen that. Again, another example that this pitch has got a bit of spice in it for the Seamers. Been a very impressive start here. It's been fantastic from Hampshire. I just, I love the fact that you can have a player like Jamie Smith score a 70 ball century in the county championship and in your T20 team he's sometimes as low as nine. John Turner in again. It's cleared him, but only just, and he'll scamper a single. But again, almost a replica of what we saw with Laurie Evans. Banged in by the impressive seamer, John Turner. And in this instance, Jamie Smith in no kind of position to play the cross bat hoik. Managed to get away with it this time. Let's just see from the replay that I feel, I feel like Smith must be picking up the length very early to even attempt the shot. He's just getting rushed from that kind of middle of the pitch area, shortish back of the length. Ball's really skipping onto the batters when it's being bowled from this Vauxhall end. going to scamper hard but he's going to settle for one Sam Curran very good stuff by John Turner I do feel the need to say that he is John Turner it has Donald on his back which would be 
And you're in Donald, I would imagine, one of the Hampshire players. John Turner has just come into the side in recent weeks, and clearly Hampshire's shirt-making company haven't got around to finding a Turner on the back just yet. So, Donald Stroke Turner is in. He's in the slot this time, and that is for... Jamie Smith carrying on where he left off. He was there to hit, but you still have to do it, and he has all the class in the world, does this kid. That's the first time we've seen a Hampshire player really err on the fuller side of the on the fuller side of the of their lengths. That has been punished immediately. On that note, Turner made his debut in this format for Hampshire on the 6th of June. That's 12 days ago. I, I would I'd be hoping for a name by now. He's in again. Beautifully bold. Come back on the seam as well. Through the gate. But nothing doing wicket-wise. So. Jamie Smith lives on. 16 for two, though. Emphatically Hampshire's game so far. I'd be interested to know how quickly, if the conversations within the Surrey dressing room have already started about what the type of score they're looking for is. Because you can you can bring, lower your expectations and say, right, 150, we could be in the game here. Or do you say, we can just go for broken. 180 or 120, win the game. There's no point in kind of pussyfooting around to a mediocre total with the depth that we have. Mm -hmm. I think much comes down to making a judgment call on the pitch. Sorry, have a very strong seam attack. They also have Sullivan Orion, who's a genius in their attack. And so perhaps 160 on this track, from what we've seen so far, is a very competitive score. Hampshire have not torn the competition up with the bat so far. But again, it's a a balancing act how hard do you go and how quickly do you open those shoulders they do bat all the way down of course Nathan Ellis this time good pace through the air generally and all the tricks of the trade as well that was a slower ball first up but he has serious through the air pace wholehearted Aussie Nathan Ellis he's been a very very good cricketer for Hampshire since they pulled him in one of two Aussie overseas stars of course with Ben McDermott son of the great Craig McDermott both Ellis and McDermott, stars of the Surrey Championship, of course. Of course. Ellis with Banstead, McDermott with East Molsey. Of course, first reference, Cam, nicely done. And there is an example of that pace. Curran ducks under it relatively straightforwardly. But that has really carried through. That's my niche, Phil. That's why I'm brought in. That's why I'm sat here. I know, mate. I've got to tell you which clubs the professionals have played club cricket for in the Surrey A3 area. You are you are a legend of those middle middle divisions. <laughs> it's the twos prem, I know about it. <laughs> Good start here by Nathan Ellis. Three dots to get himself into his day's work and Sam Curran is rather becalmed at the moment. Five from eleven. It's been a very tentative stop. I also don't necessarily know how much Surrey have done wrong. I think it's difficult bat batting conditions, and I think Hampshire have bowled well. The only problem is you, there's only so much time you can hold your hands up and say, well bowled to the opposition. Full and punch into the offside, and he'll gather himself quite comfortably. And there's misfield buzzers time, so here he comes. Back for a couple. Sam Curran will take that. Thank you very much. And on these tiny little moments, the momentum of an innings can shift and undulate. Hampshire have had the wood on Sam Curran so far, and that will be making the skipper a little bit cranky. It's a silly mistake, really, in the covers. And Curran says thank you very much for a couple. Just having a change of field here. We have the cover point fielder coming into the ring and mid-wicket dropping out. Expect Ellis to bowl a bit straighter at Sam Curran. Got him. Surrey a three down. 18 for three. Now it's Sam Curran gone. Inauspicious shot in truth. It wasn't really there to drive. He's tried to extend the hands through it and it's rather looped to mid off. Nathan Ellis now into the game. Easy catch there by Liam Dawson at deepish mid off but still in the ring. Sorry, 18 for three. The old tactical misfield. Get Curran back on strike. Throw him a wide one. 
Tron tempts him into going over the ring. Caught, jobs are good. And what did we think of that, Phil? <laughs> it's all so obvious. Well, I spoke about undulations in, a, in an innings, or perhaps that's what we were actually getting at. So, Kyle, Sean Abbott is the new, new batter. Interesting. So, they could have gone with Sam's brother, Tom, who's a more conventional right-hander in the mould of Jamie Smith. But Gareth Batty and Chris Jordan, the skipper, have rolled the dice and brought out they are, their pyrotechnic Aussie overseas. It could be hit yourself out of trouble time now. If they go, if it's going to be this difficult, let's go for it. What's the, what's the point in trying to nerdle things around and get yourself to an under-par score and say you're, pretend that you're in the game? Yeah, I think you're bang on. That's the thinking now. Aussie to Aussie. Excellent stuff by Nathan Ellis. They've been inspired so far in the field of Hampshire. They've bowled, I would say, one hit-me ball driven by Jamie Smith through the covers. But aside from that, across the first five overs, Surrey are 18 for three, and Hampshire have barely put a foot wrong. Absolutely, and that, even that, that one boundary we've had, it was, it was full of length, but it was very straight. And Smith had to fall, make, give himself room and force that ball through the offside. It wasn't a, a kind of gimme boundary by any stretch of the imagination. We've only got one more over the power play here, and then Hampshire will be able to release the pressure valve of the field and have men on the boundary everywhere. Surrey will be oh, they're a long way behind the game. It's going to be John Turner again for his third over. Jaffa, beautifully bold, conventional leg, leg cutter, really. It's gone off the seam and spat past Jamie Smith's outside edge and taken by the keeper, Ben McDermott, in front of his face. That's well bold indeed. It's been superb by the young lad. Again, just from this Vauxhall and that length, back of the length, really, really shooting through and rushing Surrey's players. And again... Keeping the batsman honest, banging it in, almost shaving the right ear of Jamie Smith. He was in no position to play that shot. Certainly set this innings up superbly as John Turner, who's running hard, but with a lot of imagination as well. There's not been anything predictable about it. And he's hit his lengths with a bit of intent and aggression as well. Another fresh air shot. This is excellent stuff by the seamer. Hampshire have their two men out in the ring at deep kind of backward point, a very wide third man and deep backward square leg. So he's bowling straight. He's bowling with both sides of the wickets kind of in play at the moment. It's just scooting through and Smith hasn't been, so far, hasn't had an answer. Clothed it to mid on and that's four down John Turner's the star of the show so far two for ten now in his third and it's Jamie Smith this time the man to go well well 18 for four Surrey in the sixth over what is playing out here Cameron Ponsonby well there was a risk with the weather around later we weren't going to fit a game in and Surrey almost very sportingly have decided <laughs> Well, if we all just get out, we can, we can be out of here before it rains. It's fine. I don't really understand what's happening. All these dismissals are very similar. That's, that was almost identical to Laurie Evans' dismissal of an attempted pull shot flat back of length we've been talking about. And it zipped through, rushed the batter, and spliced it to the ring. OK, so it's the skipper, Chris Jordan, who got Surrey out of jail in their previous game against Somerset with an excellent innings, as you said, Cameron. Well, he's got another job on his hands here. And then some, 18 for four. Right, Will Jacks, four ball naught, went to Chris Wood, caught straightish mid-wicket by Benny Howe. Laurie Evans then went, caught by James Vince from the bowling of John Turner, just for a single. Sam Curran caught Dawson, bowled Ellis again, caught a mid-off. And then a third catch at mid-off, this time mid-on, in fact. Jamie Smith dollied another one up, scored Dawson's second catch. John Turner's second wicket, Surrey 18 for four in the sixth and in all kinds of trouble. We have a slip in a gully as well. Why not indeed? Here he is, John Turner. Well bowled, but 
squeezed out into the onside, off the inside edge. Chris Jordan's away. Whew. Right, where are we? 19 for four in the sixth. Surrey's middle order exposed. They have still in the hutch. Tom Curran, Jamie Overton, Son and Orion, Gus Atkinson all have made runs this year. Tom Laws as well, at number 11, at least nominally at number 11 on the card. So everyone can bat in this side. That said, they may well have to at this rate. Four down in the sixth. Full and squeezed through the offside. Won't run away for four. But Sean Abbott at least is away. And Chris Jordan is sharp. Lightning between the, the, the sticks and he gets it home comfortably for a third. So, Sean Abbott is away. He'll retain the strike at the end of the power play, which has been emphatically dominated by Hampshire. Cameron Green, Cameron Green, Cameron Ponsonby departs for a time. He's got a fair way to go to match him. And Chevy Green, I see what I see what's happened there. Joins me. Hello, sir. Welcome, Phil. It's good to be back. It's lovely to see you. I hesitate to ask if you've enjoyed the fair, but it's been gripping, if nothing else. Definitely not. Um, definitely not a good start for Surrey at the moment. <laughs> um, so I wouldn't say it's it's pleasing to be back. But um, yeah, sorry, in a bit of trouble here. Hampshire bowled very well, and um, a lot of batting in the tank still for for Surrey to come. So um, I'm excited to see if Surrey can respond out of the power play. You know, still a lot of batting to come. Um, and let's see how it gets going. OK, it's going to be Fuller to replace Woody, James, uh, the uh, Mickey Stewart. And another fresh air shot. It's four now. So would you have brought Sean Abbott in at five and Chris Jordan at six? Can you understand the thinking there? Um, like I said, Surrey's got a lot of batting, and you know Abbott's got a uh, hundred here not too long ago, quite a big one. Came on in to save the day, so um, and, and obviously CJ's on good form from the other night. So uh, yeah, there, there, there must be a, a reason for it, and um, wouldn't back against Surrey's thinking. Runs his time into the onside, but now of course post power play, there's three men out on the onside and two men in front of the square on that leg side. So just a couple, nicely played. So it's definitely going to take something special from Abbott again to uh, get this innings going again. Yeah, 34 ball 100, 11 sixes to get Surrey's T20 campaign away. And a beautiful interview he gave as well, referencing Andrew Simons, his all-time hero. More runs into the onside, but just a single. Yeah, Simons equaling Simons' 34 ball 100, which set the benchmark in this tournament and it's never been beaten yet but has now been equaled at least by Sean Abbott that evening it was truly extraordinary for those of us lucky enough to be here to see it and Surrey could do with it just half of that really at this point I was uh, very fortunate I um, was in the best seats of the house that night with Ebbs uh, yes you were celebrating it up so um, yeah that was you know, very kind of her to let me into the inner circle been very disciplined of Hampshire's seamers so far very little in the hitting arc they just bowled a really good line really good length and you know it's not like they've bowled uh, amazingly you know wicket taking balls you know sorry take a bit of risk on some of those shots and it hasn't come off but they've definitely held their line um, kept it really tight Bold again. Further illustration that there is something in this pitch. Can Surrey scramble and scrap their way to a score is the question. Uh, Given these off, definitely to bowl that. Um, still a lot of time to go, you know. The T20 is a funny old game. Uh, Cam mentioned the weather. So far, so good. Looking all right. Not too many grey clouds in the sky at the moment. So uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get to see a bit of a, a good second half. Excellent running. Yeah, I think this is just the way they have to play it initially. Try and get their breath back, if nothing else here. 
so. 26 for four after seven. Just one boundary in the first seven overs. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Who would have thought it? <laughs> the form that Surrey have been on recently as well. And, and to be fair, the form that Hampshire have been on, you know. Um, but they are an excellent T20 side. Great history um, playing in this competition. Um, you know, so it, it does take a bit of grit and determination to get back in, get back into a game like this where get himself up for it. Um, but 26 for four is uh, crazy, crazy times. Yeah, it's a binary inning so far. Nought, one, seven, nine, and six not out, and two not out. Sean Abbott and Chris Jordan. Big repair job required. It'll be Jordan to face up to the marvellous Benny Howe. What a joy of a cricketer he is with his bag of slower balls that he throws on his back and just tours, tours up and down the country. He's got 50, 60, 70 slower balls, if you ask him, and it goes up with every year. Chris Jordan has played that very nicely, and that does run away for the second boundary. He's timed that perfectly. Didn't hit it too hard, waited, played it relatively late to get that angle behind square on the offside. And the sprawling dive by Nathan Ellis there at deep square, not enough to pull it in. And so, Chris Jordan is away, just the second boundary four of the day in the eighth. say though Chev he's coming on the back of some tidy form with the bat that's more like it by Benny Howe yeah you know, lands it right on that length time after time always got to um, applaud CJ when he's doing good things you know as, a, as an ace ambassador you know always got to champion him so no he's you know brutal innings towards in, in the last game so hopefully he's got a bit more time to bat can build from that and, and take it from there just hitting a lovely four as well Nicely done there by Benny Howe, dropping it onto a length. And Jordan playing it quietly into the onside, offside rather. He's, he's not going to do anything silly here. Yeah, 36 from 12 against Somerset with four sixes the other night. Chris Jordan is in form. He'll pick a single up to long on four deliveries gone in the eighth sorry inch into the 30s 31 for four Vintage stuff this so far by Benny Howe. Can you imagine Sean Abbott coming from Australia? Wouldn't have seen too many bowlers of this kind of ilk. It's an interesting Club mini Club mini contest, this. Club level is like military medium. <laughs> yeah. It's that Wiley Fox who just doesn't do too much, doesn't miss their line. Yeah. And that's got that's gone underground. Straight over to Ashley. family you're having a nice day with us we're having a great time apart from surrey and not doing as we expect no but they do have confidence they, there's still time there is yes but uh, i'm hoping they beat the lowest score i've ever seen here at uh, surrey of 70 odd well i'm sure they will i've got confidence yeah, in them good, i mean good. i know you're here you're back for the ashes are you looking forward to that oh absolutely yes i'm hoping we'll be 2-2 and then we'll win the ashes on the test match here that's that would be ideal dave great to speak to you enjoy the rest of your afternoon with us thanks very much ashley we're really enjoying it cheers <laughs> okay back here in the here and now and it's going to be fuller again to begin his second over it's shoveled out into the onside for a single initially by chris jordan very caribbean next pull shot there it was wasn't it he seemed a bit glum, didn't he, the chap out there in the best seat in the house? Yeah, poor Dave, you know. Hopefully Surrey can turn his fortunes around. No one wants to see the lowest score at the Oval T20. Oh, 
Ooh, Playing a miss yet again. Perhaps this is a tiny bit too paced, this track. Could be the only real explanation because there's been a, a, a number of cross-bat heaves that have either delivered a wicket or a dot. I'll let you tell that to Lee. Look, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, Lee is the best groundsman in the country. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not saying that out of fear of reprisals. Trust me, the pitch he produced for the World Test Championship was marvellous. Another one. Oh, he's claimed him. And the finger is up and he's gone. He's gone beautifully bold. And again, that has flown to just slightly short of a length. Surrey a five down here. Surrey a 32 for five. A Jaffa again. Slap with the movement. Yeah, heavy, heavy length by Fuller. It's climbed at Sean Abbott. He's tried to just angle it down behind square on the offside. And all he's done is feather it through to Ben McDermott. There was no doubt about it from the keeper or from the bowler. And there it was. The finger was raised suddenly, five down. This is crisis time. Sorry. Jamie Overton is the new man. He's only going to play one way, you feel. And I think the thinking that applied to bringing Sean Abbott into the fray applies again here to Jamie Overton. Yeah. Better to go down fighting. He's definitely going to go for it. You know. Big levers, strong lad. Um, if it's in his area, it could go a long way, but... Yeah, I've There's still a bit of time. There's still a bit of time. Doesn't doesn't need to go full health for lever just yet. Yeah, I'm fortunate enough to work. My day job is here at the Oval, as indeed is yours, Chev. And not a bad place to work. Not right? a bad place to work. And sitting here, the, watching the practice the day before a game is quite something. He's off the mark immediately into the onside, Jamie Overton. Yeah, watching them practice the day before here at Kier Oval is quite something. And Jamie Overton. Uh, it's as big a cricket ball as I think I've ever seen. Him and Will Jacks are probably the biggest hitters of the lot, by by the odd the odd yard or two. But they're always trying to outdo each other, yeah, outmuscle each spot. other. The reach in stuff does look pretty good out there in the middle. Yeah. And for those who haven't seen it, they put various fielders up in the top tiers of the stand here in the JM Finn and try and clear them. Short, well bowled, a stifled appeal, nothing there. But again, further example of how clear-minded this attack has been. They have their plans, they've stuck to them, they've hit their areas as well. And Surrey's batters from one to seven haven't quite known how to adapt to, to Hampshire's... It's been quite creative to, to, to watch them go about their business here, exploring the middle of the pitch in particular. Yeah, Hampshire have come in and hit her quite back of the length and kept it pretty pretty straightforward and sorry I haven't been able to combat it just yet again back of the length punched nicely into the offside which is a single so it's a clear ploy and you know maybe they've looked at previous games of, of how sorry's batted and just keeping it back of the length and just challenging the batters and it's forced sorry into making a, a few mistakes so they haven't hasn't been too many of the, the wickets that you'd say was um you know, fantastic bowling. They just kept it in the right areas and uh, just kept it pretty simple and forced Surrey into, you know, being a bit impatient and forced some, some shots that maybe they shouldn't have been playing. Yep. Bang on by Chevy Green. Clarity of thought has been very evident. They've played on the egos as well as some of the Surrey top order. Banged it in. Come out on top so far. They've also fielded tightly in the ring. It's another dot ball. They're just going to try and winkle out a few overs here from Benny Howe. Ego, is that sorry strut stuff is long gone? Every cricketer has an <laughs> ego, Chev. <laughs> and when you're seven, seven and two, oh, little inside edge on to the pad, but nothing doing. It's 
So Benny Howe into his second over here. Just that one boundary four from his first delivery. Been quiet stuff aside from that so far. And again, further evidence that this is a pitch that's a bit spongy perhaps. Many a player have tried to play through the line and not quite got the pace of it just yet. And this is where it gets interesting, you know, the pressure starts to build. You could see uh, CJ thought he had a little bit of width there and he's gone at it hard with his bottom hand and missed out. But, you know, this is where pressure builds with all these dot balls adding up. And at this stage, singles is all that Surrey can find. Scavenging here. Amazingly, it's only still <laughs> two boundaries <laughs> for the winnings. Yeah, there's various different ways to, uh, to appreciate a T20 game. And Cameron Ponsonby, he's a bit younger than me, he, he just wants to see pyrotechnics all the time. I don't know, I think there's, a, there's something quite charming about a game like this as well, a bit of nip and tuck. And again, just as we had with Benny Howell against Abbott, the same thing applies here against Jamie Overton. Jamie Overton is all muscle and strength, and Benny Howell is all canniness and nous. He swept this fine, and it will just be the man. Much needed boundary. It's just the third of the innings, right at the halfway point. Surrey move on to 39 for five at, after 10. Chevy, it's international women's cricket returning to the Kier Oval for the first time uh, since 2009 this summer. England are taking on Australia in the women's ashes on Wednesday, July the 5th. The men's series, of course, is firmly underway, as we know. And the women's test match starting at Trent Bridge next week. The Kier Oval will be hosting one of the ashes T20s. We've got Surrey stars like Nat Siver, of course, the great Nat Siver, and Alice Capsey as well coming through. One of the best young players in the world, returning home in England colours to take some, take on some of the biggest stars in world cricket, such as Elisa Perry, Talia McGrath, uh, and many, many others. It should be another brilliant evening's cricket, cricket in the capital. Tickets start from £24 for adults. That's just £24 for adults. And get this, just a, ki a quid if you're an under-16. Kids for a quid. Great stuff. I don't know if that is a, a national thing or a Surrey thing, but ever since I've been working here, Kids for a Quid has been an amazing uh, initiative. Yeah, they've already sold well over 70,000 tickets for the Women's Ashes, which, as we say, gets, gets underway later this week. Uh, go to kiaoval.com, of course, uh, and you can find out all the details that you need. It's well worth getting involved. Runs into the onside. Scampers the first, but it'll settle for one. Just laid that nicely off the hip. Works it down to fine leg. Jamie Overton, back end of last over, took that sweep shot from off, off stump, maybe middle and off. But I think as we move into the second half of this innings, these are the chances, these are the, the gambles that they're going to have to try and play because no point in edging up to a subpar score. Get away with that. There's no one conventionally placed a square leg. But yet another example, Chev, of a ball looping off the splice. Yeah, it's been a common theme um, so far this innings, you know, that, that back of the length uh, and it's just spooning quite up into the, into the middle. 41 for five in the 11th. No one really saw this coming. I'm shocked if Hampshire saw this coming. But they've done exceptionally well. Oh, oh and he's Put downed it. it. That was... Put it down. It was there to take. Ben McDermott got one hand to it. He got a good mitt to it, I think. And it's just grasped. It's a healthy edge. But he's made the ground. And he will be a bit cranky with himself. He was just he's going the, the wrong way. Yeah, just going the other way going to his left. Why now? If he just held his position there, it would have been a, quite a regulation take. Is that the moment 
that Surrey need. Still, the squeeze is on here. Chris Jordan, 11 from 19. Jamie Overton, new to the crease. Just three boundaries all day. Another dot. Thank you very much. That's excellent work. Jamie Fuller has come into the attack and carried on where others have left off. Hampshire are looking like a, a crack side at the moment. Play some inspired cricket in the first 11. I'm going to give way for a quick breather. Cameron Ponsonby will be taken up alongside the great Chevy Green. Yeah, 41 for 5 after 11. Um, Hampshire in amazing position and uh, as Benny Howard looks to continue. Cam, how are we? What a treat. Mate, this is uh, Spencer Falkrell. Absolutely. Benny Howard to continue. Oh. Just one of his many, many types of slower balls beats Jamie Overton. He doesn't necessarily like to call himself a seaman, Benny Howard. The first one was a fast spinner. It's, it's, it's a bit um, a longer run up than the Ryan. A thing, we've got to have a finger spin here. Absolutely. I feel like this was how play, cricket was played in the 1800s, just running in and doing all the weird stuff with your fingers and making the ball go in different directions. I'm, I'm going to reference our club, Spencer, and um, you know this this spell here reminds me of. Uh, uh, and there's nothing to do with his physique, but um, how he bowls is, is very Arkib Sindhu esque. So as Arkib. soon as you started, <laughs> I knew exactly where you were going. It's that, 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 that nagging length and line that just doesn't really miss his, his line or length at all. Many players in the local area are looking for something for Sindhu. Sorry. They won't be much very happy for it. <laughs> Sorry, Championship legend. This is just relentless from Hampshire. It's. One of the hardest questions to answer in cricket as uh, when you're talking. One of the hardest questions to answer as a cricket fan to your non cricket fan friends is who's winning. This is, oh, yeah. this is actually quite an easy one to summarise <laughs> at the moment. Hampshire are winning at the moment, but we. Yeah, oh, Hampshire nice. definitely on top. I'm sorry. It's clipped it away from Chris Jordan. The pressure just keeps building by each dot. Who knows? Hampshire might come up to bat. We find out par is 85. But then it's fun. Cricket's a funny old game. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely would rather see. Sorry, have um, the, the bowling to uh, cause them problems. But um, long way to go before now. Cut away by Jamie Overton. Powerfully, but straight to the man on cover point boundary not bad placement that from the skipper well the game almost plays itself for Hampshire from this point you have your four fielders in the ring you have your scouts out on the boundary you see oh sorry what, what are you going to do we haven't seen a single over of spin we haven't seen Liam Dawson there's been enough movement in this wicket that they've stuck their seamers throughout that ball is in the air long off interested should be out is out Chris Jordan gone for 12 of 24 deliveries, but stay where you are. I think it may have been a no ball. It was indeed a no ball. Chris Jordan survives. Ben McDermott, Benny Howe gestured, gestured rapidly. Countdown Cricket, a brand new way for us to play this summer. To bowl, bat and field, to be confident and take our chances and always having fun. This is our game. It's a return for Benny Howe to finish his over. Chris Jordan now at the non-striker's end. The life for Surrey's captain. But he 
Pint have the wicket the very next ball. Long on interested and swallowed this time. But of course, it's a free hit. He's done me again. <laughs> two and two. That is now the end of the over. Both batters have been caught. Both batters are not out. A lot of things happening. I got confused. <laughs> 48 for 5 after 12 overs. The partnership is worth 16 if you can't call it that, but it really is desperate times for Sari as we just see the replay of Jamie Overton finding the hands of Liam Dawson for his third catch of the match, the second one. Oh, he only two that counts, the third that. I'm confusing myself with this free hit, Malak. Too many, too many words going on in your head. <laughs> But the important ones are the score, 48 for 5 after 12. I, believe. I think that may be a sign to come, though. You know, Surrey's obviously got to try and put a bit on that accelerate and um, saw Chris Jordan there and Overton kind of force a few shots there, you know, to try and get some boundaries going. Still only three boundaries for the whole innings. Um, Nathan Ellis returns to the attack. It's kind of just hit that really hard into the ground for nothing. Some of those shots in the nets and it's like hit really well and it's like, oh, shot. <laughs> it's four there. That's four. It covers right. <laughs> Nathan Ellis continuing from the pavilion end. So far boasting figures. Just the one over, one for two. This is just his second over of the match. So we're going to have a change of field. We have third coming up into the ring. Finally dropping down. Fine leg dropping out. I'm interested to see if they go short. That Woody's going down to fine leg. And Jamie Overton. The double bluff, it's full. And they scamper through for a single. Jamie Overton whacking the ball into the ground once more. Now, so we haven't yet reached 50. We have one batter in double figures. It's hard to put, it's hard to wear. There aren't many rose tinted glasses I can put on at the moment. But if, say for the sake of argument, sorry, you've got tens from here on out, they only get themselves to 130, so they really are in the mire here. And then, as, as things are going, that could be a, a reasonable score for today. Hooked out to the square leg boundary. Will it be caught? No. It's four. Drops in the gap just short of the rope, and it is four runs. Jordan didn't know much about it. It wasn't the cleanest of contacts. It was, it wasn't in complete control. Um, kind of rushed him a little bit, but got enough bet on it, and, and it found the gap quite nicely, one, just for one bounce. Chris Jordan's looking a long way away from where that ball was when he made contact, but the end result's all that matters. It's four runs. Ellis will run in once more. I'm surprised they've changed to a short ball tactic given how, mu how much success they've had so far. And that is hit to the man at mid off. And the story of the innings continues. Sari's batters just haven't been able to get the pace of this wicket. And the ring has been absolutely peppered with simple catches. James Vince there with the simple catch at mid off. Well, 53 for six. He's gone through it way too early. Is there... I don't know if there's too much kind of nuance and thought Surrey can put into this now. <laughs> I think it's... The game is slipping away, if not already gone, if we're being brutally honest. Yeah, if we're being really critical, you know, 50, 53 for six. It wasn't yeah. in the game plan. It wasn't on the whiteboard as they walked out. It definitely wasn't. Um... But these things can happen, and they've, they've had a, a terrible collapse. And you know, they, uh, I've said it earlier. They, they, you know, Tom Kyrie in coming in now. He's been batting at number four in, in recent games. So, you know, well, this is six overs, eight overs to go, eight overs to go. Current had a, a fantastic tournament. He's been playing in this role as a specialist batter as he's recovering from his stress fractures. And he, him being at eight is an example of the strength of this Surrey side. Yeah, and we still haven't seen um, Narayan. Of course. Well, I suppose that with, with, with the Ryan has a particular liking for spin, and, and, and Hampshire haven't, haven't bowled any. No. But I, will, I am. I'm, I'm intrigued to know if this will go of one of two ways. If Hampshire come out and it's the same, it's incredibly difficult to score runs, or it's the 
the club cricket game everyone's played and where it's very difficult for one team and the other team breeze home anyway ellis to continue tom current facing driven well driven beautifully on the up through the covers for four what is the problem asked tom current it's easy out here what's, what's the problem Scratch the got, got in earlier. <laughs> All those tips coming back to him back in the uh, in the dugout, how the pitch is playing. Exactly. He said, it's all right, lads, I've got this. It's a load of nonsense, it's fine. Just playing the V. High elbow. Ellis in once more. Some sliced away to backward point should only be one, is only one. Filled on the fence there by Ross Whiteley. And that is the end of the 13th over, 58 for six. Will we see any spin? I don't. I doubt it. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, doesn't look like. And why would you change if you're Hampshire? Yeah, they, they, they've obviously would have with someone like Dawson in your team, and they would have had that consideration at the start of the game. But how the innings have started, how the seamers have bowled, it doesn't make any sense to to introduce any spin at the moment for now. And um, you know, how continues and very impressive uh, three overs so far. It's remarkable. If you look at the, the bowling figures, Chris Wood, two overs, one for five. John Turner, three overs, two for 14. Nathan Ellis, two, two overs, two for 12. Going out runnable makes him the most expensive bowler. James Fuller, one for nine off three. Benny Howell, not for 16 off three. Here he is beginning his fourth. Just looks to find that gap. The field is... It's an off-spinner's field. You have a short third, a backward point, a cover and mid-wicket, and everyone else out on the boundary. Current just there trying to use what little pace there is on the ball to cut that ball late past the two men in the ring and find the fence. He just forces you into, you know, he's holding that same line of length and he's just forcing you to, can you make a mistake? Are you going to try and improvise to hit a gap? It's beautifully played by Current. There is a fielder on the fence. Will he be able to cut it off? No. no, four more. It's where Surrey have found some joy in this innings is that lap sweep against Benny Howell. But I think as the bowler, you're quite happy with that shot. It's, it's quite a lot of risk. And also, both times, it was very almost cut off. It's not exactly like they've been the most convincing of boundaries. I agree. I think Howell would be quite... He wouldn't be too distraught about that. Um, because if he... If, you know, they say you miss... If they miss, you hit and... <laughs> Is, is a high risk shot which can bring high risk rewards. Well, we've just seen a change. We've, we've swapped a mid, we've taken the mid wicket out. He's now at short for one light, fine leg. We have deep backwards square. Beats the bat once more. This is it's a, kind of the wrong time to talk about with Benny Howe, but I remember talking to him about his preparations for T20s, in particular his batting, the lengths he goes to, and he'll, he'll research what the bowler is most likely to bowl after he's hit for a boundary. OK. So he wants to know, OK, what's your kind of um, reaction ball when you're trying to get out of a hole? And so he'll know, he'll do his research on absolutely everyone. Takes the inside edge into that vacant mid-wicket area. So I'd say, Cam, if anyone's going to research that kind of stat and fact, that is definitely you. It, and you know, know what? It was me. It was. <laughs> I respect that very highly. It was um, a piece on, on Crick Info a couple of years ago. Look it up if you wish. <laughs> so Hampshire, very happy to let Surrey knock the ball into the vacant mid-wicket area for ones and twos. They do, that do, does not hurt their chances at all at the moment. Surrey need boundaries. And they might have one here. And on cue, Cap. They do have one here. Second tier from Jamie Overton. <laughs> Judging by the celebrations, Jamie Overton has been caught only 110 metres away from where he's standing, so he gets sick to the best. That went catch. miles. Kick, kick, catch it might be. Jukes on him. We'll have or to. her. Can't see who it is from this angle. Or that, you know. We'll have to wait and see if, it, if that's caught on camera. I hope for the fans' sake it is. The replay here, just short, and Jamie Overton has powered that ball brutally. Yeah, here we go. This is the angle we want to see. That's a no ball as well. No ball as well. The cameraman, the cameraman. it went a lot That's further than that, up. I can tell you that for free. <laughs> you can see Liam Dawson looking back. Three hits. Jamie Overton on strike. Oh. 
Free hit heaved onto the leg side. Is it six? By my eyes, that's gone. The Hampshire fielders are looking sheepishly, and Liam Dawson has signalled that it is six more. Free hit, and as I was wisely advised behind me, you can't be out for a free hit. Being, being bullied by my mentor, Phil Walker. <laughs> You look up to people and then they do this to you. What did you do? They never meet your heroes, right? Exactly. I enjoyed me. I enjoyed seeing you again. <laughs> well. I used to coach you. Quick for one out to the fence. I was, uh, is that the end of the over? I've been getting giddy with all those boundaries. A fantastic over for Surrey there. Two sixes. That's exactly what they need. 72 so for six. Let's look to order there. No, Jamie Overton with two fantastic strikes. Uh, clean hit for the first six and then took advantage of that free hit for the second one. 78 for six. Surrey won't be. Gone. So if Surrey can, you know, push it a little bit, you know, get anything between, you know, 120, 130, who knows what can happen. In effect, they need that every over. Uh, it's yeah. as simple as that, really. They need something quite remarkable to happen. But. <laughs> Their collapse was remarkable, so we've already had one remarkable thing in a negative fashion. Positive as well, why not? And both batters at the crease are capable of doing that. James Furr is the attack. Big swing and a big miss. It's James Everton looked to cut that ball over backward point. Oh, I remember your coaching sessions well, Chevy. You've taught me the pull shot, and I've got out playing it ever since. <laughs> <laughs> He was about nine. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not taking credit for uh, your full shot dismissals. <laughs> so we have every fielder out on the leg side. And we have a ring on the offside with a cover point out. So that's why Jamie Everton was just trying to get that ball up and over. Those are the fielders behind us on the offside. Action replay. And I think Jamie Overton's a bit. I, I think. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think it was that high as he suggested. Oh, Jamie Overton has just played a kind of tennis serve, as if to say that's where the ball was. But I wouldn't possibly imagine he was uh, disputing the umpire's decision. That's not something that's... It's just not cricket. Not. No, absolutely not. And the umpire's got it spot on. It's past Jamie Overton, just above shoulder height. Two dot balls. <laughs> Slashed out to the offside and powerful enough to beat the sweeper on the offside. Yeah, this, the sweeper's never going to get round today. He's the sweeper's at point, and it's kind of just squirted through cover and extra cover. I'm not sure. I, I might, it might be me misunderstanding the plan, but Hampshire have a field where the protection is on the leg side, and Fuller's been going short and wide on the offside. Yeah. So I don't know if well, this they're is... They're kind of bluff. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know if they're bluffing what or... What poker face it is, but I think you've got a bit of treatment there. Great take by McDermott. My ball, have a stretch up, some bowl it again, Fuller. So 83 for six, not, not quite yet at a runner ball. But Sire will be hoping the, the very long levers of Jamie Overton will get them beyond that, which is a slight interruption. Some movement behind the bowler's arm. And just a bit more. instant replay. Well, stewards have had a bit of a nightmare there on that one, to be fair. Stop them and then let them go up to the seats after. Pulled hard. Does it split the field as it does? It's gone racing down the square. Once it's on that square, it's going to speed straight off. Pick the gap beautifully. Put the two boundary riders out there. This is exactly what Surrey needed. Two boundaries this over, three in the last. So we have a 20 run over. Change of field here. Now we have a 10 it's run over it's and counting. Up. So fine leg up, long off out. For the likely go full. He does. Is he heaved? Is he caught? Oh. Not caught. Another six runs to Jamie Overton, who's giving his county a fighting chance here. Fantastic cameo. Moves on to 36 of 17. 
These are sixes of necessity. Did we get a clear catch? I don't think we did. Fuller there, just back of the length still. Again, I'm not quite sure he's naming the plans that him and James Vince will have put together. And that's oh, clipped oh away. Fantastic over for Surrey and Jim Overton. That's really, really sensible, clever and effective batting from Overton there. He knew that fielder was now up in the ring. He only had to get a tiny bit on that ball to make sure they got four. And I believe we'll have a change in the commentary box as Phil Walker replaces Chevy Green. And a change in the pecking order as Phil takes over the lead commentary. <laughs> Thank you, Cameron. We were just having a chat at the back of the box about what Surrey could have done differently if there were any other alternative tactics or approaches available to them. But what we've seen from Jamie Overton is thoroughly smart, sensible cricket. He's eyed up the weaknesses in Hampshire's attack. He's taken on that relatively short boundary. Uh, and as Cameron quite rightly says, as soon as the field changes, he's got the presence and the wherewithal and the presence of mind to just tickle that ball behind square. Suddenly, from just 18 deliveries, He's on to 40, and while it hasn't changed necessarily the, the complexion of the innings, it's certainly changed the tone of these last few. Five to go. Chris Wood back into the attack. And as we saw right at the top, he's been broadly unhittable today so far. Further evidence of it, Tom Curran, who's inched along to 10, very much in the slipstream of Jamie Overton so far. But as we've said all along, they bat all the way down to number 11. So if they can maybe winkle out another 45, 50 from the last five. And that will help, because that's going to clear the man. Just clears him. He's got enough of that, Tom Curran, and he breaks the shackles. Moves on to 16 now. It was pretty flat, but the man at deep square, or deep mid-wicket even, there was a cursory jump, cursory dive, but that was always clearing him. It's a good shot because it wasn't that short. And he's away. There is a bit of momentum now between these two. Much needed. He's cut this hard behind square, but good work on the boundary by Nathan Ellis. And so just a couple. But there's definite rhythm now to these two. They came together with Surrey in all kinds of trouble. And they've just brought up the 50 partnership indeed. Last week it fell at 53, and now 105 for six, with four and a half to go. He's hit hard. Don't bother moving. Tom Curran is away here, moving into the 20s. It was a quiet start to his innings, but he's really starting to play. Feeding off the work of his partner, Jamie Overton, at the other end. And whisper it, but this is what they do. Chris Wood, can he pull it back in the latter half of this over? It's there, it's in the slot, it's hit high. But he's not got enough of it. Mid on his under it. Nicely done. Easily taken, really. Well... So, a very useful cameo by Tom Curran, but possibly not quite enough. It was there in the slot to hit, but Chris Wood, using all his experience, he just ran his fingers across just to take that little bit of pace off it, just enough. Curran's through with the shot, gets underneath it. And it's comfortably taken at long on. So just when Surrey were getting going, Cameron, just when they were getting into their work, Another setback, seven down now, 109 on the board. Jamie Overton, though, is still there on 40, and he's joined by the enigmatic Sonny Lorraine. Oh, but by my maths, that 50 partnerships come off around 18 deliveries, just kind of doing it off the scorecard. And I think it shows one of two things. A, it gives Surrey a glimmer. B, if you're Hampshire, you go, well, it can be done on this wicket. Yep. There's always that kind of double-edged sword when you drag yourself back into the match with the, with the bat. Well, no, Surrey really needed that, and yes, Tom's current's gone. But if you'd offered Surrey that kind of cameo with Jamie Overton still at the crease three overs ago, they would have absolutely taken it. 
a remarkable, a kind of... A, a, I don't even know what the right word is. An abomination kind of broke out, having a complete, a complete contrast with everything else. Meanwhile, Sonny De Ryan ambles into the fray and clubs one down to Long On to get himself going. Seven down, 110 on the board. Jamie Overton, a lone hand, really, in truth. 40 from 18 deliveries. And Sonny Ryan has joined him now. 100, 100, 110 for seven. And it's a crucial four overs, you feel, in this game. If Surrey can somehow wangle 35, 40-odd to get themselves up to 145, 150, could even be more, of course, with Jamie Overton playing so freely. But I think considering where they were, they would absolutely take 150 at this point, Cameron. Absolutely. Nathan Ellis back into the attack. Nothing doing there. It was probably there to hit, but Sanon Ryan already prepared to give himself room, looking to carve anything over, over backward point, you would say. Three men on the boundary on the offside. Two men at long on and straight mid-wicket. He's in again. Oh, my word. I, I think so. Um, Hampshire know the game here, what's happening. They know there's weather about, and they've all started running around very quickly in between deliveries. Ellis is jogging back to his mark. When Tom Crum was caught, there was no celebrations. Everyone returned to their positions. They want to make sure they can sneak in five overs of their second innings at the very least. And the umpires let that one go past. That would have been marginal. Umpire Neil Bainton. He's umpired me a few times in, in the past in the Essex League. Was it your turn now? We need to be talking about the Essex. One, one, one of your own, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a tight balls. one, but he's kept his arms down by his side as umpire Bainton. I'm not sure Sonny Ryan was too impressed with the decision. Nonetheless, Ellis has started well here in the 17th. In the slot but rather toe-ended to backward point. So another dot. This is good stuff by the Aussie Quick, who's come back into the attack. He was very good first up, and he's carried on his good work so far. Sorry, 110 for seven. Well, this isn't Narayan's game. Narayan's fantastic against spin, but against the seamers, he doesn't have that quite that same explosiveness, and that's being shown up here with, with Ellis bowling a fantastic over so far. And he can only squeeze a single out there into the offside. Ellis has bowled to his plans very well there. So Narayan, he was hanging out on that wide line. He had two fielders out. He had a, a kind of very, very backward point out on the, on the fence. And also a man kind of stump high at the bowler's end uh, on the cover point boundary as well. Knowing that if Narayan got any battle and he had that protection, I was surprised not to see Narayan kind of walk across his stumps go for a good old-fashioned heave over the leg sides, but it didn't happen. So, no man behind square on the boundary on the offside. It's well bowled, but it is in the gap, and that will run away for yet another boundary for Jamie Overton. He's doing this very well. It's him or bust for Surrey today. Make that five fours alongside three sixes, 44 from just 19 deliveries. Playing a different game to his teammates so far. And he holds the key as we move into the business end of this innings. 115 for seven, three overs still to bowl. John Turner, who was so good up top with the new ball, he's going to come in to finish off. He bowled three overs off the reel initially, two for 14. Chris Wood will have another. You imagine that he will bowl himself out as well. And Nathan Ellis also still has one to go. Hampshire, as Cameron astutely points out just trying to get through their overs as sharp as possible there is half an eye as well on the cutoff time but there's still six minutes until the cutoff time where of course you have to be in place ready to bowl from the first delivery of the final over so they should be okay for that and not incur any penalties bowled in off 
the inside edge, maybe even a bit of pad, but he's gone. Sonny Narayan is not at the races there. Eight down, one, one five now, sorry for eight. And just again when Hampshire absolutely needed it just to stem any momentum, stem any flow. They've come up trumps. And it has to be said, John Turner is just still making his way in Hampshire's first 11. 22 years young in just his fourth, in fact, fifth T20 in professional colours. Has been superb today. Been the bowler of the match so far for me. Took two up top and now he's added the all-important wicket of Sonnen Orion, of course, who can do so much damage at any point in the innings. I think Jamie Overton will be quite frustrated with that dismissal there. He's, he's bowled leg side at Narayan there. He's given them that entire leg side open to knock one. And the game at the moment is Jamie Overton. He's the man they need on strike to kind of power them to any sort of total. Jamie Overton only five away from his highest ever T20 score. Gus Atkinson, new man. He's on the pads and he's punched that nicely up to long arm. He's been around the runs as well, of course, this year. Gus Atkinson made a brilliant 70-odd in a championship game earlier in the piece. And he's making quite a name for himself as well with the ball. Good, good cricketer. Very, very good cricketer. One from the conveyor belt, of course. The fabled Surrey Academy. Producing so many good cricketers, not just for the club, but for, English, for the English game itself. To the here and now, Jamie Overton, what more does he have? 44, so currently, make that 45. He hits a big ball, but he's, he's not the quickest between the tracks, and so he'll settle for a single there. And Atkinson's role is to get off strike. Whatever he does, a dot ball is criminal at this stage. Two and a half to go. Short, and as we've seen time after time today, off the stickers, but this time into the vast expanses of a spread field. And so Gus Atkinson has done his job, ungainly perhaps, but he's done his job to get Overton back on strike. And let's look at this field again. You have a deep point, long off, long on, and two men out on the hook on the onside. Two men up, outside, behind square on the offside. And he'll be cranky with himself there. It was a full banger on the pads, but he's tried to give himself room. And if we're being charitable to John Turner, then perhaps he followed him. Perhaps he saw him out the corner of his eye and cramped him for room. The upshot's a dot ball. Short, bit of pace over the right left shoulder and a dot to finish. Excellent stuff. John Turner, four overs, no maidens, three for 17. First time he's bowled in a professional game at Keir Oval. And he enjoys this track. So two overs to go, you assume it will be Wood and Ellis. Ellis to take the penultimate and Wood to finish off the 20th from our JM Finn end. We shall see, but... Surrey need a minimum of 20, 25 here, you would feel. Absolutely. I think you're likely to see Atkinson go for his sweep shot here. He, um, you might have seen it, it was clipped up on social media against Michael Hogan in the county championship. He kind of religiously dumped him into the square leg stand from one knee. It's got to be quick. Smart cricket by Gus Atkinson, dropping it at his feet. Jamie Overton acknowledges as well his partner's presence of mind, bringing the big man back onto strike. 11 deliveries left in this innings. And it all hinges on the man with 8-8 on his back. He's not just pounded the middle of the pitch with some serious pace for Surrey, but he has turned himself into a seriously useful lower middle order batter as well. Not just for Surrey, but of course for England when he made that astonishing 90-odd on debut. So he's got pedigree. Brilliantly done, though, by Nathan Ellis, who's complemented this attack superbly today. Takes some, some guts and courage to lob up a slower ball outside the off-stump of a player with the power and 
devastating impact that Jamie Overton has had. But he's holding his nerve brilliantly here. The Hampshire Seamer. In the slot, bowled in. Jamie Overton goes nine down for 119. And you feel with that crucial moment, Surrey's chances of putting even a relatively subpar score together go with him. It was well bowled. It was right down at the block hole. He might have taken a tiny bit with it. No, it's just beautifully done right at the base of that middle end leg stump. And just desserts for Nathan Ellis. It's been a bit of a... There was just a fever dream three overs of this innings where Sari started finding the middle of the bat and Jamie Overton in particular did, but it's, it's either side of that. Overton took a little while to get going, then slowed down at the end of his kind of 24-ball innings. And so I think, I think when, when it... Hindsight will tell us Sari were just under par. But the makeup of this innings, there's been no real shape to it. It's been a Hampshire dominance, three overs of madness, and then a return to Hampshire's dominance. And now really all Sorry will be hoping for is another kind of run of ball. You, you, you want to play the overs. Nine deliveries left in this innings. Nothing doing there. And again, he's running back to his mark. Hampshire... So we are right on the cut-off point now. So with two deliveries still to go, Hampshire will just fail to meet their cut-off time for the start of the final over. So of course, that will impact on the field options that James Vince can call upon. They've brought a fifth fielder up into the ring already, brought mid-off up, and a long delay waiting for that to happen. Runs for Tom Laws. Just the single. Staggering up to 120 for nine, though. With just one ball left, the penultimate over. And it will be Chris Wood to finish off if we indeed get there. So... The feared rains are just starting to reveal themselves here. Be a single. And they're going to come back for a two, and they will make their ground quite comfortably. Well judged by Gus Atkinson's. Just one or two spots of rain materialising out there. Hopefully nothing to worry about just yet. But Hampshire's urgency is not just due to the cut-off time, but but due to the awareness that there might be one or two problems with the weather later on this afternoon, and this is a game they absolutely need. They have to win this game. They have to get at least six overs in, of course, to complete the game. And they will be very, very comfortable at half-time. Just keeping half an eye on that weather map. And there's certainly some thunderstorms around the area. Perhaps we'll get lucky. Or rather, if you are a Surrey fan, you might be doing the odd dance. As we, so it is, as we expected, Chris Wood to finish off, 122 for nine. Now this final over has been reached. Ham uh, Hampshire have <laughs> slowed right down again. We do have five fielders in the ring. So I assume that cutoff time was missed. Or they're seeing that Surrey are probably unlikely to be going for the ropes in, probably just trying to turn over the strike for a runner ball. Just a single, hit hard, but straight to deep mid-wicket. I think you could probably shake hands on one, one, two, eight here. Both sides would be happy with that. Both teams know the game here. And it will play out just to conclusion. Sim game, if it was Brian Lara cricket, you'd hit sim game, sim to end of innings. Be happy with 130. You've lost me, Cameron. I forget the age gap. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just another shift in field. 
attacking the covers region here. I think now Hampshire Field, who's hopped across from the leg side, now going to point. I'm interested to see what Chris Wood's doing here. Is he going for a dot or is he going to try and give Atkinson one? Wide ball. I think that is a fair call. Pretty clear what he's trying to do. He's just given a bit too much on that angle, has Chris Wood. But overall, they've been extremely disciplined today. That's just the second wide for no balls, admittedly. But just eight extras across the whole of the innings. Excellent work. Bowl in, that's your lot. 124 all out. Chris Wood has the final say. He started strongly and he's finished strongly. And in the gaps, Hampshire have been inspired. They've fought hard out there. This is a must-win game for them. And Surrey, having started poorly, fell away in the middle. Had a rare moment of momentum with Tom Curran and Jamie Overton. Jamie Overton really the only man to really step up and perform with the bat. His 45, far and away the most important knock in this Surrey innings. Uh, and Hampshire's five bowlers have been absolutely superb there. Each man has stepped up, done his job, exactly as James Vince would have wanted. And so Surrey limp off rather ignominiously, really, 124 all out. Impressions, Cameron? And that's the absolute best-case scenario innings for Hampshire there. They, yes, there was that three overs of carnage, but you almost do legislate for that when you're planning and playing T20 cricket. You're expecting there to be a time where the opposition find the ropes. I think realistically, despite it can be as difficult as a, a wicket and Hampshire can bowl as well as you'd like, but realistically, I think Surrey kind of will be severely under par here and Hampshire will absolutely be fencing their chances. On that last wicket there, I think it made sense Atkinson was shuffling across to the offside because Hampshire were trying to trying to dry him off runs outside the off stump. There were so few people on that leg side. But I believe that with Betty in the stands waiting for the halftime show. Thank you so much, guys. Well, Hampshire, with that absolutely brilliant start, then some great bowling in the opening five overs. Surrey's batters just didn't quite know what to do with themselves. Tough pitch out there, tough conditions as well, guys. Um, Surrey, we're in all sorts of trouble. Credit to Jamie Overton. He came in at seven and he did his best to get Surrey to that respectable score with his 45. So let's see the highlights from the first innings. Hampshire needed to get off to a good start and they did picking up Will Jacks straight away in the first over Chris Wood the left arm seamer doing the business straight away and Will Jacks rather limply flicking it to straight mid wicket for a blob so it's the perfect start for Hampshire who won the toss and elected to field first and a good start became an excellent one when James Vince the skipper took a catch at deep-ish mid-off to give John Turner in just his fifth T20 appearance of his professional career a first wicket. John Turner was excellent throughout the day, as indeed were all of Hampshire's seamers. That was four for two. Jamie Smith came in on the back of that scintillating 100 in the championship earlier in the week. But both he and Sam Curran were unable to arrest the decline of that, those two openers and soon enough Sam Curran held out as well to deepish mid-off it was a story of the day Hampshire pulled their lengths back they explored the middle of the pitch they were all extremely disciplined and in Nathan Ellis their Australian overseas they have a start Jamie Smith was the fourth to go on just 18 inside the power play and that was the second wicket for John Turner and Hampshire were absolutely bossing the game at 4 for 18 Surrey of course came into the game top of the league played 9, 7 and 2 and with Hampshire having lost their last couple they were desperate to get going and indeed they did the skipper, Chris Jordan, came out six to try and arrest the problem. Played a couple of nice shots. 
Coming off the back of a brilliant 36, not out, of course, a couple of days ago against Somerset. So he was in form. And his opposite man, Sean Abbott, despite having made that incredible 100 here a few weeks ago, was unable really to trouble the scorers this afternoon. Nicking off to Fuller, taken comfortably enough by Ben McDermott behind the stumps. When he went, Surrey were 32 for five in the ninth. And James Fuller became the fourth bowler to pick up a wicket. With the fifth wicket brought Jamie Overton to the crease. And it was a lone stand by the former Somerset man. Who showed great pluck and invention as well as good sense. Chris Jordan at the other end was trying to find his range. That was one of the few mistakes really in an otherwise excellent Hampshire performance in the field. And it was Jordan to go leaving it Surrey in the doldrums at 53 for six in the 13th James Vince picking up yet another catch in all there were four taken in that region from mid on to mid off Hampshire's bowlers had a clear game plan and they executed it brilliantly Tom Curran came in at eight alongside Jamie Overton and for a moment Surrey looked to enjoy themselves the momentum of the inning seemed to shift when the two came together. Jamie Overton's strength was in full cry at one point. In all, he would clear the ropes three times in addition to five boundary fours. And while Benny Howe was very strong for the first two or three overs, he got some tap in his final over against Overton. Tom Curran and Jamie Overton came together in the 13th and for just two and a half overs they put together a 53 run partnership Curran got himself going with a marvellous pull shot over, over mid wicket but Surrey just as they were feeling like they were inching their way back into this contest Hampshire struck again Chris Wood showing all his experiences, just taking the pace off the, off the delivery, and it's an easy catch for Curry, the subfielder at long on. So that concluded their 56 run partnership in the 16th over. Surrey 109 for seven by this point. Sunil Narayan was the new man, and he didn't get going. Cleaned up for just two by the very impressive John Turner whose three wickets cost just 17 in addition to three for Chris Wood and three for Nathan Ellis Hampshire Seamers had a field day with Surrey eight down for just 115 it was a case of just how many they could find and it all hinged on Jamie Overton but on 45 he played all round a good Yorker by Nathan Ellis finished off his 24 ball 45 Five fours, three sixes, a lone hand by Overton. And that was that. 124 all out with the wicket of Gus Atkinson. Chris Wood picking up his third. Surrey, 124 all out. Hampshire have done this superbly well at the halfway point. So, Hampshire need 125 runs to win, then they're in the driving seat. Now, joining me is Chevy Green. Chevy, thank you so much. You're the director of uh, programmes at the charity Ace. You've also been in the commentary team uh, today as well, haven't you, for that first innings. How do you reflect on that? Is there anything more that Surrey could have done? I think for Surrey to get to 124 after their start has been um, great credit to them. Um, Jamie Overton, particularly, scoring 45. Um, was amazing and so it, it, they've given themselves a chance 
Um, at the start of the innings, at the, I don't think they would have taken 124, but after the way how it went, um, they've given themselves something to bowl at. You're being quite uh, positive there. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, so. You have to take the positives out of it because the, the, the start was so bad. Um, they've had to come back in. They've got something to, to bowl at. Chevy, talk to me about ACE then. What, what is it that ACE does? So ACE stands for African Caribbean Engagement. It's a talent ID program trying to get more young African Caribbean kids playing cricket. Um, it started here at Surrey in March 2020. We went into that pandemic for a long period of time. And since then, we're now um, delivering in London, Birmingham, Bristol, Manchester, Sheffield. Um, so I get the fantastic opportunity um, to lead on that every day. And you've got some brilliant kind of successful stories, successful players that have coming out of ACE, haven't you? Can you talk to us a little bit about them? Yeah, we've got um, a lot of players now playing in the county setups, and it's really going great. And one young lady in particular, Connie Squires, she's just been selected to play for uh, England in the Indoor World Cup. Uh, that's coming up in October. Um, so hopefully we can um, get her to, to get there. We're trying to raise some money for her. So please look out on our social media platforms at Ace Programme and um, help Connie get to Dubai. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We are going to hand back to our commentators, Phil Walker and Cameron Ponsonby, as uh, it feels like the rain is starting to come down. Yeah, thanks, Betty. Cheers, Chevy. Yeah, so there is a bit of drizzle in the air, but we just need... We need six overs in order to get a result. Five overs in order to get a result. And so all being well, the rain will hold off just sufficiently for us to get at least a result in this game. And while Surrey are out on their feet, they will nonetheless fancy that they can pick up a couple of early ones here with Sam Curran. We have a fly third slip, a conventional first slip. A man at conventional deep third as well. And a ring of three on the offside. I was just wondering if Surrey were going to try and take their time there. And we had a false start by Sam Curran. I'm looking forward to the next 20 minutes. What can they imagine up? He's done it again. Let's, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Just a little bit of moisture under feet. Well, James Vince isn't very happy. He's gesturing to Sam Curran. Uh, I'll say sternly. Sternly is the word I'll, I'll use for a, for a live broadcast. So, let's see if we can get this show on the road. Third time's the charm. Sam Curran's in. And Ben McDermott just lets him roll past. Well, third time lucky. And Curran pass underway with a dot ball. Curran in again. And McDermott's away. Good over oh, that would have been gone for all money. And Tom Curran knows it. Picked it up cleanly at mid-on. It was very close. I think it may have even jumped over the stumps. It's just kicked on the bounce and jumped over the stumps. McDermott would have been gone for all money. He would have. And Tom Curran, a gasp they'd missed. It was a very uh, a great hero moment in there at mid-wicket. Sam Curran just still taking his time just a little bit. James Vince ready. Pick up a couple here, I think, with Sun and Orion not the quickest these days. An easy two for James Vince. And one does feel there it's a race against time, race against the elements here somewhat. James, James Vince has been in what well, is tapered off slightly, but he started this tournament in the most majestic and incredible of form. Consecutive 88 not outs, was backed up by 103 and then 71 not out. So he's absolutely the main man for Hampshire. Well bowled and well played. A little bit of shape on that from Sam Curran back into the pads and Vince plays it soft hands quietly into the offside. I think it's interesting to see uh, Hampshire also opened up with a left arm 
uh, swing bowler in their innings, but just the difference in angles, they've got different plans going on here. Hampshire very much had fielders in front of the wicket on both sides, bowling straight, so they got, could get that Will Jacks dismissal chip to mid-wicket. Sorry, more, I think Curran's more trying to push that ball across him, an occasional one coming back in with those two slips in play. No run available there for James Vince. It's a tight offside field, as I guess it needs to be when you're defending a smallish total. You're right, that, that could actually be the reasoning in that you almost have to be uh, more conventional in your attacking senses, in a, more, in a red ball fashion, as it were. So rather than just going ring field, bowl straight, see what happens, you have to create wicket-taking opportunities. Short and wide, and gets away. No, in fact, he doesn't. Umpire decides, after a moment's hesitation, that that was just out of James Vince's reach, and so Sam Curran will have to bowl that one again. I think that is the correct decision. I was, um, I was going to be aghast on Hampshire's behalf had the arm stayed in there. But Curran will be, will be made to bowl it again. Smartly played by James Vince from the final ball of the over, so he'll retain the strike. Four for none. Five for none, correction, after one over. And Surrey will amble around, and Hampshire's batters will be ready to go, I would venture. There's a kind of burble of tension in the ground as people are looking skywards as well. And then looking at the scorebook. Everybody knows what's required to complete this game. It could well be that it becomes a, a nail-biter later in the piece, or it could be that it's a rush to get, the, get five overs completed within the allocation before the weather homes in on us. We shall see. Five for no loss. And Sean Abbott to take up the cudgels from the Mickey Stewart Members' Pavilion. Good start from Surrey. Abbott from this end going the same field that Sam Curran was bowling to, actually. We have that first slip. I think realistically it's a short third man, that fielder kind of to his right, as opposed to, you could call it a fly slip. Then we have a cover point to cover, mid-off. Man on the boundary on the offside. It's a deep backward point. And a big gap at mid-wicket. Mid-on, short fine leg. A deep square leg, the three on the leg side. Well bowled, heavy length and further evidence as we've seen all afternoon that if you really do bend your back and put it in on this track then it can inconvenience even the best players of which James Vince, Vince is one. It's, uh, there's always the, the fear or the possibility that when one team struggles in the first innings the second team comes in and blows the whole thing away. And impressions show that's not going to be the case. And that's hurt James Vince. He's doubled up in pain there, as you can see. We know exactly where it's hit him. We don't need to say any more. That is flush, Cameron. Steals himself. Back into his stance, looking a little discomforted. Cuffed away nicely, but a man relatively square at deep third, and so just a single. Again, to kind of reiterate the same point. It's been a fantastic start from Sari here. And they've gone, they've gone with their two most kind of almost conventional red ball bowlers here. And I think that's probably will be the case as we move throughout the innings. That will be yeah, almost traditional cricket being played under the guise of T20. As realistically, sorry, I have to bowl Hampshire out for less than 120. It won't go the distance. That's very clever by Ben McDermott, and that's just a one bounce four gone fine down to the long leg boundary. And that's an indication of how Hampshire are going to be approaching this power play. They're not going to nudge and nurdle. 
They've got more than half an eye on the skies as well as the scoreboard, and that's beautifully played. Very clever batting from McDermott there. When, when the pitch is offering enough that you can bowl traditional line and length and try and nick people off, the flip side of that is you know roughly where the bowl is going to bowl, so you're able to pre premeditate that bit more. It's gone again. This one's even further. That's all the way. Oh, and he's dropped it in the crowd. Oh, not without a degree of discomfort by the punter at long leg. He's shaking his fingers, yeah. but it was there for him. I don't want to be critical, but you've got to be doing better than that. You've got to take those chances at this level. <laughs> Brilliant by McDermott, though. Hampshire already on to 16, using the extra pace offered by Sean Abbott. Got it on the replay here. Just, he's just out of screen left. He went fingers up, burst out of his, uh, burst out of his hands. I think there weren't that many people around him either. I think in the grand scheme of things, as crowd catches go, it's the one you'd want. Gus Atkinson to the attack. We'll be replacing Sam Curran. Gus Atkinson has been kind of the, the cricketer's cricketer's sweetheart at the moment. He's getting quite a lot of press at the moment. Michael Atherton's been a fan talking you up on Sky Sports, and here we are doing the same on the live stream. Yeah, and it's a good start. He has been superb. I've been fortunate to see him quite a lot this year. And Gus Atkinson has got a lot of very interesting components. We have the replay here of the crowd catch. You see it just goes straight in, oh. straight out. It's kind of hits him on the heel of his left hand. Poor guy's trying to enjoy some cricket. He's getting analysed from the commentary box. It's a brutal game. He's going to go home cranky now, the fella. James Vince on the pull, but a man straight there for the shot. So just a single. Effortless, though, by James Vince. One of the easiest on the eye cricketers out there at the moment. He's had a very good career, but a very, very good season. And again, you, have to, you, have, you do tend to wonder if James Vince had been in, a, in the right place at the right time, if he'd have had more to say in an England shirt. He's a phenomenal player, and it's, it's, I always think it's telling which players, other players single out as being the ones of real quality. And James Vince's name is consistently in that bracket, where his fellow professionals rank him as one of the best. more runs it won't go away for four but he'll come back for a couple was, uh... I'll give a plug for myself why not I, there's an interview of Gus Atkinson coming out on Cricket Pro this week which I'm sure you can all get your eyes around but he was, I was he was explaining how he's kind of a very modern bowler and there used to be a more traditional swing bowler mm. but he, um, he was saying he didn't really know what a wobble seam ball was kind of when he first was on the books but now it is his stock delivery That'll be four, clubbed straight down the ground by Ben McDermott, who's in a hurry here. He's already moved on to 17. Surrey of flat, you can sense it. A few teapots out there. A, pe a pensive offside field as well now. I think they're feeling that this game has already run away from them extraordinary really where you think where we were just an hour and a half ago Surrey riding high in all formats coming off the back of a statement win against Somerset but it's just not happened for them at all so far I think McDermott here is taking his lead from Overton it's been, it's been a it's been a wicket to bully on as opposed to playing kind of traditional stroke play we've seen people trying to caress ball through the covers have not had much joy but they've got the heavyweights out it's gone all right There'll be two more into the onside. No, decided against it. No need to take any undue risks. That Duckworth Lewis Stern pass score will be squarely in their sights. They're cruising it now, of course, but a couple of quick wickets changes the equation a little. And a dot to finish. Still 24 for no loss after three. We just need 12 deliveries to complete this cricket match. 
And after that, Surrey will have a free hit to try and clamber something back from this game. It's been one-way traffic all afternoon. It'll take something extraordinary from here on in. It shows how fine the margins are when you're defending such a low total. The game is already kind of slipping away. You need, you need perfection to have any hope, really. And I wouldn't say Surrey have necessarily done too much wrong. McDermott's taken his calculated risks and they've come off. That's all that was really required. Sam Curran switching ends. And then the skipper, Chris Jordan, marshalling the field. So we have more of the field that uh, type of field that Hampshire were going before early in their innings. We have kind of a ring and mid wicket and cover nice and tight. We'd like to have more kind of stump to stump bowling here. Yeah, bang on cue. Sam Curran is a seasoned pro these days. He knows what he's up to. But you feel like Ben McDermott has already broken the back of this power play, and we're now just 11 deliveries away, so we are almost home and hosed. Whatever happens up in the skies, you feel like we'll get at least another 11 deliveries out of this game, and so Hampshire fans can rest relatively easy, I would say, at this point. Shot, shot of the day. Slapped hard over extra cover. Gave yourself room, but stayed in the shot, Cameron Ponsonby. Ben McDermott already showing the way that it should have gone for Surrey earlier in the piece. Hampshire doing this and doing this quickly. It's, it's fantastic batting, and it's kind of the, um, the, the, yeah, the chase of batting that you can almost tell where someone's going to bowl. So Surrey had made that change there where they've brought that cover point fielder up and they've dropped fine leg out. Ben McDonough has given himself room and taken on that risk of knowing if he clears the ring on the offside, he'll get full value, and he absolutely did. Well bowled, well come, well thought out there by Sam Curran. So, Hampshire, 30 for no loss. Ben McDermott, 24. James Vince, laconically going about his business at the other end. Surrey are ringing the changes in the field. But it's all rather forlorn for the home side, and the, the home crowd as well, rather becalmed. Good comeback over this by, by Sam Curran, having been pumped into the stands couple of dots to follow but he needs to influence things in a more pro productive way really because the only way Surrey are going to inch their way back into this game is by I mean, bang 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 and reducing Hampshire opening up their middle order seems like a long shot at the moment 95 to win all the time in the world to get there have some more thank you very much Ben McDermott, again, as you said, Cameron, he seems to have a sixth sense as to where Sam Curran is trying to land it. Nothing against the bowler whatsoever, but McDermott is making things happen here. He spied up the vast expanses at mid-wicket and clubbed it muscularly for an yet another boundary. He moves on to 28 in no time. It's been fantastic. He's, a, he's a one step ahead of Surrey at the moment. Kind of, why take it deep when you can finish it early? going to be tight out if he hits he's missed sums up Surrey's day Jamie Overton the man at backward point he had time to pause take aim and misfire well it, McDermott's apologized to, to, to Vince there but I don't really know why I don't know I assume maybe I think McDermott called him through and realized the error of his ways pretty quickly he gave up the ghost and it was a simple case of if he hits McDermott's gone it would have been not necessarily a game changer, but offering a glimmer of hope. Dermot is the, the, the kind of data analyst and coach's dream at the moment. The idea of when you're chasing a low total, playing within yourself and taking taking fewer risks. I hate it. I absolutely hate mm. it. Get the game finished as quickly as possible. Forget what they've done. Let's win the game as if we were batting first. Gus Atkinson to begin the fifth. Big swing and a miss. 
wasn't quite there in his arc, but Ben McDermott is ticking and no reason to try and slow down. I can say with relative surety now that with just five deliveries left to complete five overs, we're definitely, definitely getting a game in. And after that, well, we can relax, Cameron. There's nothing worse than hanging around, not sure if we're going to get a completion. Five deliveries to go to get to the end of the fifth. It's a good start here by Gus Atkinson. He's not given up at all. I was, that first delivery, I think I've just seen, imagined something. I, I was sure that just hit him on the back leg in front of all three and, not, and no one cared. <laughs> but I, don't, I must just be completely wrong because, well... No one was interested. Maybe it came off a bit of bat. Maybe it was going miles over the top. But I was appealing from 100 yards away. Pushes off again. Barrels in to Gus Atkinson. It's good over this so far. Just trying to peg it back a little bit in Surrey's favour. It's McDermott. He's still... He knows that the, the field that team's set in T20s is almost always a tell of what type of delivery is going to come there. And although he's missed the ball there, he's known that Sarri are likely to be going straighter. We've given the protection on the leg side, so he's gone over to the left leg side to try and be able to give himself room and pierce that offside ring. Punch nicely down the ground, but Chris Jordan is sharp at the mid-off, and so just the single. It's been a very fine over from Atkinson so far. McDermott. I know that his, his, his and Overton's innings are kind of similar by strike rate, but I must say I feel like McDermott's been more control than Overton or any other batter was on this wicket so far. I think you need to look so far 22 yards down in the other direction. Vince on 5 for 11 to know how difficult it can be out there. Make that four more, James Vince. You cannot bowl there to James Vince. He's superb on the pull shot off the front foot or back. He advanced a little bit, held back when he realised it was short, just rolled those beautiful wrists over it, and that's four more. Well, 5 of 11 becomes 9 of 12 pretty quickly. It's a fantastic shot. You see here, it's short, he's given himself room. He's pulled it hard just in front of square. It's always the most, one of the most satisfying shots in cricket there. Short, wide, carved. Lands on the rope for mine. Umpire straight up with the six. James Vince comes to the party. We have a game. We have a completed game, and it's emphatically Hampshire's. It's been an extraordinarily one-way story so far. Nobody anticipated that Surrey would capitulate to this degree by any stretch. The form team in the country... Buzzing into the game. And they've been schooled by Hampshire. Who have lost their last seven as well against Surrey, right? So they absolutely needed this. <laughs> Sun and Orion, the magician, the, the wizard, the maestro. This is Surrey's last throw of the dice. It's not often you see Narayan come into the attack during the power play, but... Desperate times call for desperate measures for Surrey, who are currently on the receiving end of a good old-fashioned tidy. Don't speak too soon. We might be about to see something amazing. We are seeing something amazing in front of our eyes as it is. Sun and Orion is just about the perfect person to pick from the world game to make to change a game on a dime. It's a good positive spin that. I was appealing for that one as well. Been broadly unhittable for the last 10, 12 years. He is a one off as a cricketer, his son and Orion. Sorry, he's been so strong this year that he's not really had to break sweat, not that he ever does. And straight away, the tenor of this innings shifts and changes as Orion's wiliness comes into play. This is a man who has a strike rate with the bat of 146 in T20 and an economy rate of a tick over six across his whole career, 6.07 across 462 matches. 
That is a dream cricketer right there. Well, if he bowled all 20 of the overs, sorry, could go all right. <laughs> Doesn't work like that, Cam. And Ben McDermott has gone from being impossible to bowl to to rendered shotless. This is what Narine's genius bestows upon these players. That was, I remember... No, I remember. They might pick up a couple here into the onside. Yeah. There's an interview of um, Will Jackson. Obviously, Jax is a kind of developing off spinner and kind of asking him about how much you can learn from the Ryan, someone like the Ryan. He says, obviously, it's, it's amazing and you try and listen as much as you can. But also, there's an element of he's kind of speaking a different language. You're going, oh, you're doing things as an off spinner that I really am not. Attempted reverse speaks of McDermott's confusion, really, and a fresh air shot. He was quite fortunate to get away with that. Just two runs from the Ryan's first over inside the power play as well speaks to itself. Still, it's Hampshire's game so far. 48 for zip. McDermott 32 and James Vince going about his business quietly, but with immense authority on 15. Cameron's had enough. Rejoined by Chevy Green. Coming on as CJ went into bat and now he's coming on to a ball. Well, we need something special from the boss here. Yeah. Middle overs kind of specialist. Quiet crowd now, Chev. To be expected, I suppose. And he's full initially. And Vince just angles it behind square for a single. Humbling. Mm. <laughs> mm. Humbling uh, performance. Uh, Didn't see it coming. I, I don't think many did, and, um, to be fair, with the recent form. And, you know, um, hopefully this will give Surrey, you know, a bit more inspiration going into the two games next week. Do you think they deserve to to lap up a bit of criticism for the way they went about it or do you think it was just one of those days? I just think it's just been one of those days, you know. Um, you don't expect Surrey's batting not to fire. Um, and uh, all credit to, to Hampshire's performance that they came out strong with the ball and Vincent McDermott have come out flying with the bat. You know, I think with the weather in queue, they attacked that first kind of power play in those first five overs to make sure they could get over the line if the rain did come down. Vince is running this one hard off the pad. He's very focused here, is James Vince. He doesn't have a great record against Surrey or indeed at the Oval in any form of cricket. So this is an important game for him and his team. Yeah, he's had a fantastic start to the T20 Blast. Um, scored a plethora of of runs. Yeah, he's having an excellent season, all, all told, is James Vince. But he missed out twice here in the Championship game, caught in the slips both times. So I feel like he, he needs to leave his mark on this ground. Monstered, but straight to mid on, and so no run. But yeah, he's playing very nicely in all formats this year. He seems focused. Just turned 32. He's in the prime of his, of his career, is now James Vince. Storied player around the world, of course, in T20 cricket. An absolute fixture of the Big Bash and various other tournaments. He's not yet cracked the IPL, but there's plenty of players who are not quite in James Vince's class who have had a tinkle of the IPL. It wouldn't surprise me if he, if he features in that tournament before he's done. Hit hard, but Jordan's hands are as good as anyone's off his own bowling. Still, they scamper through for a single. And Vince is always kind of knocking on that. England door isn't that conversation, isn't he? Um, had his chances over the years. Well, perhaps as a test match player, that door now may be shut, but as a T20 player, especially with England's top order shifting around a little bit, and Jason Roy maybe not being quite the fixture he once was, Alex Hales getting on as well into his mid 30s. Vince as an opening bat has a record to compare to anybody's. 
single out to long on. And just in this tournament as well, across the final week of May, he made an unbeaten 88 against Middlesex, an unbeaten 88 against Surrey, and 103 against Essex, and 71 not out against Sussex in a week. How's that for a week? <laughs> Should have put the Lutchie numbers on as well. <laughs> he made 87 in the second innings last week as well in the championship game against Lancashire. So he's in sparkling form, whether it's white ball or red. We'll see how he goes against the Spin King, Mr. Narayan. Have you ever faced Narayan in the nets or anything like that? No, no, no. I haven't had the pleasure. How would you go about it, Chevy? How do you play a, b a bowler of such I'm not endless sure. creativity as I'm this sure lad? I, pick it, so I think I'll just try and whack it. <laughs> Hope for the best. <laughs> Get that front dog down. <laughs> play all around it. Yeah, he cuts the greats down to size. Time after time. With a flick of the wrist here and a, and a slightly different grip and a knuckle ball and a carom ball. Hides it behind his body. He's a master at work. It's classically played by James Vince because he was done in the flight. Holds himself back and punches it with no drama at all up to long off. See, Hampshire's played these last few overs very sensibly. You know, they, they went off to that racing start. They got what they needed after that first five, just in case if the rain did come down, and just in cruise control at the moment. But you never know, you put two wickets onto the score, change of momentum maybe, who knows? So the required rate is just 5.59, so that is no bother at all as it stands. hit hard but straight to the man at deep mid wickets so just a single yeah wickets are everything here for Surrey but they're just sitting in there's not much there's not much they can do at this point Chev really no it's uh, you know comfortably in, in Hampshire's hands and um, you're just hoping for a bit of an inspiration a bit of skill a bit of magic While Sonny Ryan is unhittable, you can play him like this. You can plonk him into the onside. You can play risk-free cricket. Yeah, of course. And normally, you know, situations that he comes on to bowl, there's a lot more uh, pressure on the batters to try and maybe go at him and, and take on that bit of risk. Um, so, Tom Laws, for his first bowl of the afternoon, brilliant young cricketer. Another one on the uh, Surrey production line that has started the season well and, you know, had some fantastic bowling spells this season and been trusted with a few final overs in the recent games too. Yeah, I was lucky enough to do the, the Kent Championship game for, for Surrey TV and he came on on the third morning with the game leaning to Surrey but broadly in the balance... 45 minutes later, the game was basically over, and that, that spell he bowled was absolutely immaculate. Everything's correct and right about him. He reminds me of a sort of proto Chris Wokes kind of cricketer. You yeah, know? definitely, good, definitely good resemblance there, and um, you know, always been an astute cricketer from a young age. And do, do you know him? I do. I do. Um, I have a picture in the uh, in the ace office of uh, a young young Tom Laws at under 13 on the. On a tour we did. Yeah, he's come through. He's doing very well in the early part of his career. Let that one drift down the leg side for a wide, but made his name just last summer, didn't he? In the in the 50 over stuff, with obviously the hundred dominating the calendar at that time, and so it gave the opportunity for a few fringe players and young tyros to come through. And and he tore up that tournament for Surrey, and he's just carried on really from then. Now broken into the four-day team. That's hit hard by McDermott on the top of the bounce. Climbed into that. Played it very beautifully on the up. Just punched it through the extra cover. 
It's not a shot we see too often that played on the up uh, over here, but he's executed that superbly. Into the 40s. And Hampshire up to 64 for no loss. This feels like a matter of time, Phil. It does, <laughs> Chef. It does. It's hard to spin this one any other way. Hampshire past the halfway point, just 61 needed. Nice. Again, those signs again of a bit of pace and nip. Tom Laws is much sharper as well than people maybe initially thought. They thought he was maybe a medium pacer, but I think he's a bit more than that. No, definitely, and you can see the carry that went through there all the way to Jamie Smith getting quite high up on it, uh, taking it quite high above his head. Um, and just, Wicket always has a bit of life in it here at the Oval. That's gone high. And it's cleared the two men on the leg side boundary comfortably in the end. Six more to Ben McDermott. I'll take one of those. Top edge for six. He's doing this quickly and with great intent. Surrey have no answers. Hampshire demolishing them here on their, their home patch. Now 72 for no loss in the ninth. Well, well. Three maximums, four boundary fours. Ben McDermott's playing the innings of the game. And picks up a single from the fourth delivery of Tom Laws' first over. So would you have been an under-13s coach back then, Chef? Yeah. So you yeah. used to take the, take the kids, did you? And did, did, a few, did a few stuff of the... Uh... The, the pathway here a um, few odd jobs you know bouncing around as a coach trying to get your name in the, the mix in the hat the jack of all trades <laughs> master of <laughs> one of his one of his pupils is in again Tom Laws that, there was a, that was a good age group um, Nathan Barmer was in that age group as well um, yep. and hopefully he'll get some more opportunities as the season goes on yeah, he's on the professional squad of course Nathan Barnwell Can Laws get out of this over 15 from it so far? Make that 16. I think as an upcoming coach, you, uh, I've, I found it great value in um, putting myself in different environments. I've done the performance stuff, done disability, women and girls, you know, just trying to find your feet and the, the different environments. I would encourage any young coach to kind of not just pigeonhole himself into one place, mm -hmm. gain as much experience as you can and um, see where it takes you. You even find time to sit next to me on a Sunday afternoon. Chev, you're the hardest working man in showbiz, I tell you. It doesn't get much better than this. I'm missing is a roast. Did you play yesterday? No, my cricket and playing days are long over. Um, now I just watch and go down to the club, maybe have a, a drink and have a laugh. Narayan in again. Vince on the pull, on the bounce to Abbott at deep mid, to just a single. Your footballing days are still yeah, that's my release. alive and kicking, though. Try and kick, kick a few people around. Um, I think when you're around cricket every day, sometimes the last thing I want to do in a day off is, is play more, be around more cricket. I used to get bugged a lot as well. I used to get asked about what's going on in Surrey and stuff. McDermott nudges it into the onside. He's played superbly here, but that is his only shot. His only shot against Sonny Ryan, I think it's fair to say. Safety. I think he's looking for a nice red ink. Nothing doing there. Good field placement there from this captain, just moving across, taking it a little nudge. And Jordan still trying to rally his team along, keeping the energy up as best he can. The lights are on now, the clouds are moving in. Vince into the gap. It will run away for four. Dragged down by Sonu and Orion, and Vince needs no second invitation. You said earlier, you know, Vince is pretty strong with the pull shot, one of his favoured shots. And he's played that superbly well into the gap.
single to take Hampshire up to 81 for no loss at the halfway point. In fact, just one more delivery to come. I'll jump the gun somewhat there, Chev. See if that is a good or a bad one. Okay, 82 for no loss at the halfway point. International women's cricket, Chevy, returns to the Kier Oval for the first time since 2009 this summer. England, as you will know, take on Australia in the women's ashes, commencing on Wednesday, July the 5th. With the men's series firmly underway and the women's test match starting at Trent Bridge this week, the Kier Oval will be hosting one of the Ashes T20s. You've got Surrey stars like Nat Natalie Siver, Alice Capsey, returning home in England colours to take on some of the biggest stars in world cricket. It should be and will be another brilliant evening's cricket in the capital. And tickets are available starting from 24 quid for adults. That's just £24 for adults. And for, for under-16s, a quid. Kids for a quid, folks. Available now at kiaoval.com. Get on there and get behind it. It's going to be a scintillating series. Women's cricket enjoying deeper and greater popularity than it's ever known before in this country. Already comfortably over 70,000 tickets sold. This was a month out from the first game. That is unheard of, really. But it's a mark of how central the story of English cricket is now it's getting women's cricket hugely. more runs easy as you like for ben, ben McDermott running it down off the face are you seeing it as well reflected in your, the ace programme as well the greater female participation yes it's um, going very well um, with our, our young ladies on the programme you know, one young lady in particular you know, Connie Squires, she's just been selected to play for England. Uh, she's 15, but set for the England in the 17s in the Indoor World Cup coming later this year. Vince goes long, effortless off the hip. And there is no finer timer of a cricket ball in English cricket than James Vince. And just after Ben McDermott brings up the only 50 of the game, his skipper, James Vince, responds with a beauty. A nonchalant uh, one-handed grab from the crowd with the man in the orange shorts. On the full? On the full. Went for it one-handed. Well, this is huge, Chef. You don't play around with a thousand pounds like that. Into space as well. It won't go for four. It's going to plug. Come back for two. The crowd are stunned here at the Kier Oval. Just 34 to win now. This game is going to be done and dusted before you know it. And there's one or two punters in the crowds thinking, I wonder what I'm going to do with the rest of my afternoon here. <laughs> James Vince is the master of T20 cricket in this country. Just goes about his business relentlessly, really. And incapable of an ugly moment. Ben McDermott resumes on 50 from 37. It's a telling knock in the context of this low scorer. He's gone up for it. And he's been given. He's been given a little feather through. Not much celebration by the Surrey, Surrey players. I think they know their race is run. But Ben McDermott goes for 50. Caught behind. Gus Atkinson picks up his first wicket of the day. Easy catch for Jamie Smith. 92 for one. It will still take a miracle for Surrey to even turn this around. And Ben McDermott goes. Four fours, three sixes. Got things going with some impish paddle scoops and ramps initially to break the back of the opening six. Executed the Hampshire game plan very well. Came out firing and a lot of boundaries. So, young Toby Albert is the new player, new batter in at three. 
yet to really get going in this in this tournament so far, but he's very highly regarded. Local lad, Basingstoke born. I know Vince is a big fan of his and he's giving him every opportunity to make a name for himself. Helps if the captain favours you a bit. Indeed. Meanwhile, the master goes about his stuff. So what's the equation? 32 to win at a run rate just a tick over three and a half <laughs> with nine in the hutch. Yeah, I think that speaks for itself. It's definitely getting much darker here and the wind is picking up as well. You can see it on the flags above the Mickey Stewart members pavilion. He's off the mark. It's a good run. He was running there come what may, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah I think he was, may even look like he was going to run through Noreen at one point. The lights are on. It's very overcast, quite close. It's not a bad situation for the young, young player to come in and try and get a bit of confidence and see it home. Just four deliveries left for Sonny and Orion. He's been broadly unhittable. There's that James Vince pull James shot. Vince. More. Brilliantly. Oh. Brilliant effort down there, but I thought he may have just managed to pull it in, but no. That was hit too cleanly, and Gus Atkinson's sprawling dive was not quite enough. Fantastic. James Vince moves into the 40s. Sorry, Chevy. James Vince moves into the 40s with his third boundary four, in addition to a couple of effortless sixes over long uh, mid-wicket. He just hits it so clean. Punches it into the offside. Comes back for a second. No, nope. happy with just the single. So two balls left of Narayan's spell. Toby Albert will be facing just his second delivery. He won't have seen too many bowlers of the quality of Son and Narayan before. Change of angle coming around the wicket. Picked up a single, nicely done, though, into the offside. Brings up the 100 for Hampshire. 100 for one in the 12th. That sounds like a normal T20 score. <laughs> yeah. Until you see what the home side have done. The crowd are baffled and bemused, it seems. On the sweep, but just a single. 101 for one, after 12. Dynamo's Cricket, it's Countdown Cricket, a brand new way for us to play this summer. To bowl, bat and field, to be confident and take our chances. And always having fun. This is our game. Cameron Ponsonby. How are you, Phil? I'm feeling just good, thank you. We're, we're here for the finale. I feel that it, it might be something of a damp squib. I think Hampshire are going to do it. <laughs> I think they're going to get over the line. Or as Alistair Cook once put it, a, a damp squid. Damp, damp squid. They're, yeah. I, think they're, they're, I think famously damp. <laughs> <actually. laughs> they're emphatically so. OK, so Christopher <laughs> Jordan, with the last rights, really, in truth, of this game. Hampshire needs just 24 from eight overs. Flicked beautifully, effortlessly, and on the bounce by James Vince to the man at deep square. So just a single, just a flick of the wrists. And his astonishing T20 campaign continues at pace. Bring up his, his record so far for me, please, Cameron. James Vince's. James Vince's record in the T20 Blast 2023. Well, luckily, it was just the click of a button away. I believe this is updated live, so this is his 10th match of the campaign. He's averaging 76 with a strike rate of 161, which is, I think off the top of my head, pretty much around 10 and over, which is pretty good. You take it. And an excellent captain as well. Leg sideish by Chris Jordan. He's cranky with himself. They will. So Surrey have a very strong... They have the strongest net run rate in the group, which you would expect of the team who, who is top. But such as the um, kind of erratic nature of the format... You, you're only ever two, lost, two matches away from potentially two kind of 
losses you weren't expecting. So Surrey will be trying to drag this out for as long as possible to make sure the hit to their net run rate is as small as possible. And on the flip side, Hampshire will look to finish it as quickly as possible. Perhaps a little bit of inside edge onto the pad and lobbed, but just shy of Laurie Evans. Uh, will Jacks rather at the at backward point. So 23 needed, seven and a half to bowl still. And Hampshire could do with finishing this quickly, not just because the clouds are moving in, but as, as you rightly say, Cam, they need to up their run rate. They are in that, that clump of teams in the middle. Mm. And run rate invariably separates places fourth from fifth in the final shakedown. That's edged and will run away for four. No slip, no gully, no hope. That'll be a, a nerve settler for Albert, I think. It's kind of a tricky-ish situation if you're just finding your feet in the team and the format to... You desperately want to finish this knot out. Mm. You, you know that on a personal level. You can knock this ball around until the end and see yourself home. You just see a replay of... Um, the flash of Albert's blade, but for the sake of the team, you need to keep that foot down and uh, make sure that 3 0 win is turning into a 4 0 win. There you go, bang on cue. Trying to essay a little funkiness to get us going, but slightly peculiar shot, in as much as there is a deep, deep long, long leg down there as well. Normally, you'd expect that shot to be played against a man up on the 45. Still, shows a little bit of hutzpah at this late stage. So the skipper, he's run the show very calmly throughout the summer so far. He'll be disappointed with how his charges have gone today. Chris Jordan, he's gone up. Umpire says no. Slightly leg side-ish, although he had moved across his stumps quite notably there as he did indeed at the start of this over as well. But the umpire says no. And so Chrissy Jordan, with that killer smile of his, takes his hat from the umpire and ambles up to mid-off. This game is done. But there will be more. And Surrey are still in the box seat to qualify, you would feel. The umpire just gesturing to uh, Chris Jordan asked, why not, sir? And he said, going down leg. And um, Chris Jordan quite... Shook his head, uh, not in agreement, I'd mm. say. Mm. But uh, at this point, I think you want anything, you want anything uh, to go your way at this point, if you're sorry. And the cards are not falling their way. So we still have a slip in. So we only have four men in the ring. And they are attacking the new young batter at number three, hoping just to dent that run rate a little bit. Played nicely behind square on the offside. Crowd making their own entertainment at, at the cost of Tom Curran there. Giving a bit of a cheer as he picks up the ball cleanly. I think that's the cheer of a crowd who know the game is up. They're making, up their, making their own fun at the expense of Tom Curran, I should say. Yeah, it's definitely spitting a little bit harder now out there. Vince on the pole, thank you very much. Beautiful. Rolls those wrists. So it's completely effortless, entirely safe, and unimpeachable authority. He's a special player at any level. But in the blast, he is he is the master. He does have that trademark look of it. He wears that long sleeve jumper with the sleeves half rolled up. There's few to do it, much like James Vince. That's also in the gap. I think it will be cut off. In fact, oh, that sums up Surrey's afternoon. Sean Abbott with the sprawling dive. James Vince brings up yet another 50. 36 deliveries this one's taken him. Just another afternoon in the yellow for Hampshire's star man. And he is compiling one of the great single individual seasons in T20 history here. Playing a different game to the rest. And have another one. Glorious. 
imperious by James Vince. Stayed in the shot, checked it over mid on. He knows exactly where the field is. He has a sixth sense about from what this bowler is going to be doing. And he is in complete control of his game and his mind. He's going to see this one home. You feel with another red inker next to his name. Don't forget, he was 5 off 11 as well. He's really gone up through the gears. Just 5 to win now. A single into the offside. So just one delivery to face from the, uh, the new lad, Toby Albert. And as you say, he'll be thinking, just don't get out. I'll be playing this with a very straight bat. If it was me, take your knot out, take your win, go home. Lovely day. Yep, yep. Slip in now. That's close. And umpire Bainton is saying no. Next side again, you assume, but again, he had gone a long way across. I tell you what, if I was umpiring, Hampshire would be in a lot of trouble right now. I've, I've given three of them. <laughs> here we see on the replay here. Shuffle across from Albert. Uh, yeah. That's barreling into the bottom of leg stump for me, but Neil Bainton seen more cricket than you and I put together, trust me. Uh, I, can, I, I, can, leagues, I, believe. I can vouch for that. <laughs> he used to play the same club as me, actually. But anyway, by the by. OK, so... In the final analysis here, Hampshire need just four. 121 for one. James Vince to face Sean Abbott. The last rights of this game are about to play out. Four to win, and I would not put it past Vince to do it in one shot. Abbott into the Hampshire captain. Got ball. It's very unlike James. Is he feeling all right? Hmm. He's in complete control of his game. It's been good to watch. Abbott into Vince, short, pulled, and that will be it. Nobody out at deep mid wicket. Effortless, easy on the eye, and a relentless run machine. James Vince, who wanted runs against Surrey, he's gone and got them. He's finished a game that has been entirely dominated by this Hampshire side. They came here to the Kier over on the back of a couple of chastening defeats to play a team absolutely riding high and it's been one-way traffic ever since Surrey started poorly with the bat couldn't really get going after a flurry between Curran and Jamie Overton and in truth the run, the run chase has been a stroll in the afternoon murk for, for Ben McDermott and James Vince 125 for one and this game in truth never really got going Cameron I suppose convincing a victory as you're ever likely to see as you said sorry started poorly and continued in that same vein and then when Hampshire came in out to bat you had Ben, Dur ben McDermott and James Vince as their kind of ultimate partnership you had McDer McDermott playing their kind of fun fun uncle role and James Vince the sensible parent holding their hand all the way to the end no it's a fantastic win for Hampshire as well after two losses they really keep themselves in that hunt for that quarter-final place. Not, it's not a disastrous defeat for Surrey. It would be a remarkable feat for any T20 side to go through a season with just the two losses, especially in such a large group stage as happens, as is, takes place in the blast. But nonetheless, it will be a disappointing defeat for Surrey. And it will be one where they may look into it to a certain extent, or they may get back in the changing rooms and say, chalk it off, move on. We have another game very, very soon. Yeah. In T20 cricket, you have your, your tactics, your strategy, your approach, and Surrey, there's no need for them to, to change or adjust. Just one word of caution, perhaps. It happened against Sussex as well when they went a bit too, too early too soon and then were having to try and claw it back. And we saw it again in the previous game against Somerset where it needed Chris Jordan to do something spectacular at the death to rescue that innings. And so while they are the juggernaut of English cricket, they haven't quite got that balance just yet between intent, 
ultra aggression and maintaining enough of a, of a base with which to demolish teams in the final few. In the end, Hampshire have strolled this one. Betty, it's over to you. It just about held off, didn't it? But Hampshire's dominance over Surrey did not. It was Hampshire's day at the Oval. Here are the highlights of the second innings. So, Ben McDermott and James Vince walked out chasing just 125 to win. They're a fine, complimentary opening pair. Ben McDermott, the muscular, tough, big-hitting Australian overseas. And James Vince, all style and class. Vince enjoying one of the great T20 seasons so far, averaging north of 70 and striking at 165. It was Ben McDermott who was the star of the show initially. It was in the second over against Sean Abbott that he chose to essay the ramp and the paddle. And he brought in a boundary four and cleared the ropes as well. Pummeling Sam Curran over extra cover for six was perhaps the shot of the day. And while it was a small, paltry target to chase, nonetheless, Hampshire's openers did it with great intent and clarity of thought. There were a couple of scares, a couple of run-out chances, which rather summed up Surrey's day. There was one in the first over and then one in the fifth. Jamie Overton on his hands and knees by the end of a chastening day for Surrey. But aside from a couple of miscommunications between these openers, there was, aside from that, nothing else to really concern them. James Vince got into the act, climbing into a couple of pull shots. He never seems to overhit it. Always easy on the eye and playing with absolute authority. Whether it's sixes behind square on the offside or flat sixes through mid-wicket. James Vince is in the form of his life. Runs in Red Bull cricket and an astonishing run of form now in T20. McDermott careered on to yet another 50 in the format. And Surrey Seamers, none of them had an answer in truth. In the end, it was only Gus Atkinson who picked up the solitary wicket. But before that, James Vince meted out some vicious punishment on Surrey Seamers. Son and Orion was the only bowler to be calm, Hampshire's openers in truth. His four overs went for 24. But Surrey Seamers in truth were not really at the races that was the single wicket to fall Ben McDermott for a 38 ball 50 four fours three sixes all done and dusted in 44 minutes and this innings rattled along the Surrey crowd will be calmed and bemused in truth nothing went Surrey's way sprawling dives missed run outs and James Vince just went about his business, finishing up in the end. 62 from 40 was his final analysis. As Hampshire just cruised through the afternoon, Toby Albert, the young lad, came to join James Vince with a few needed. And Vince did what he does so elegantly and perfectly. Particularly strong through the onside today. Tended to hang back on the back foot, punishing anything short. And if it was pitched up on the toes, then he was effortlessly cool and stylish throughout the afternoon. Anything that Surrey threw at him, he simply threw back. And with no deep mid wicket and seven and a half overs left in the innings, James Vince saw it through, 62 not out for the Hampshire captain. Hampshire have demolished Surrey here at the Kia Oval by nine wickets with six 
four and a half, five and a half overs to go. Well, it was not Surrey's day at all. I'm back here with Cherry Green, who was on commentary duty. Cherry, I don't think anyone expected that. No, um, bitterly disappointing result for Surrey. Um, Going to be a bit of a reflection there, but um, hopefully they don't dwell on it too much. So they've got a big game that they can hopefully bounce back against Glamorgan on Tuesday. Yeah, what do you think went wrong for Surrey today? Well, the, the band didn't fire at the beginning. You know, Surrey being uh, very good so far at the start of the season, getting a lot of um, runs at the beginning of the innings, and they just lost a lot of wickets and they could never really get back into the game. I guess also credit to Hampshire as well. They were excellent, especially at the beginning. And also James Vince, their star man, getting another 50. Yeah, you can't take anything away from Hampshire. They executed their game plan ex uh, extremely well, bowled very well at the beginning of the innings, and they came out batting well with um, Vince and McDermott, both getting 50s and saw the game, seen the game home. Come on, if you were a uh, Surrey head coach, what would you be saying to the team now ahead of Tuesday? It's a big question. It's a very big question. I know the Surrey head coach, so I'm, I'm going to refrain from uh, answering that one. But um, <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure Bats, is, uh, he'll be thinking about it and uh, he'll be looking forward to Tuesday to, to bounce back and, and Chris Jordan as captain will be doing the same. Well, what do you think Gareth Batty and Chris Jordan will be saying? What do you think they'll, they'll want from their team on Tuesday? A bit more of a positive uh, commitment to the batting. You know, they, they came out with... I guess good intentions, but just didn't execute their shots well. Um, so a better execution of their shots and shot selection um, to get a bigger score that they can um, defend. Chevy, I think we can take one positive from today, and it is that it didn't rain until just now. Now it has finally started raining. Uh, Surrey are well on course for quarterfinal qualification in the T20 Blast 2. We've got four games left. We'll be back here on Tuesday as Surrey host Glamorgan. Uh, same place, find us on YouTube. But thank you so much to the commentary team. Thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you for watching wherever you are in the world. We'll see you on Tuesday. Goodbye for now.